How's the volume? It looks a little loud. Let's do that. <coughs> Single player. Tutorial, please. Oh, don't capture my mouse cursor. That's even worse. It's an annoying for me. It's probably worse for you. Same music, but it's like remastered. Cool. <clears throat> okay. I'll redo it. Oh, I oh, I can press B now to go back. Oh, I gotta fix that too. Success. Controller. Type one? Oh. What is my control? My controller is both on it, so. Um. Oh, that's cool. Oh, this is different. Uh, let's see. Let's do it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Stage settings. <clears throat> so the way I interpret this is that if you turn this on, you won't see the opponent's stage. You'll see your own stage. I don't know of any problematic stages, so I'll just keep it normal. Keyboard, replay. I'll just save all the replays. All of them. Now we do the tutorial. So the tutorial in the last game was pretty long-winded and repeated stuff, and the English was bad. <laughs> and I'm assuming this game's the same. smell an oven but I don't hear any screaming so I think we're okay to keep going <clears throat> uh, yeah this game is extremely complicated there's a lot of systems that all intermingle in very strange ways so hopefully they made the, the tutorial better I know they added even more stuff to the game this time so it's even more complicated than it was <clears throat> They also did some things to make it easier to play it, like the execution is a little bit easier uh, on certain things I know about. I, I, I don't know much, so we're going to find out. <laughs> Let's go over how to view your character and their health gauge. I don't like this remix of the song. If you start the game on player one side, your character will be on the left, while your character will be on the right if starting as player two. Each player's health gauge is displayed on their starting side. 
Since characters move around the stage freely, you may end up on the right side during battle, even if you started out on the left side. Just remember the person who stood on the left at the beginning of the round is player one, and the person on the right is player two. Of course, health gauges will stay fixed. Yeah. This is all typical stuff. I'm not going to read this, but we'll read the... Uh, important stuff. That isn't in every fighting game ever. But this is in every... But this isn't every fighting game ever, so I'm not gonna read it. Success. Success. Too much drum. Too much drum. It's like a Richard E.B. cover. Too much drum. Probably the left is at the beginning of the round. Or not too much drum, but too loud of a drum. Could just face each other when fighting. Yep. Input the zoom, character facing your right. Yep. Success. Success. House gate. Okay, so here are the gauges. Familiar, f familiarizing yourself with each gauge will be beneficial as you fight. Yep, health gauge. If you defeat it to zero, you win. So this is your super gauge, the EXS gauge. Some characters say F FLS, I think. Uh, but it's the same. It's just, I don't know, it's like a lore reason. And this is the grid gauge, which is weird it's uh <clears throat> the weirdest thing in the game i think Success. it isn't like character specific standing still Success. walking yeah okay here we go so walking in this game is kind of useless because you can dash and you can back dash and you can assault uh, so yeah don't walk Crouching, you can duck under some stuff. Success. Crouching's basic. Um, there's no like additional hit stun during crouching or anything like that. Alright. Yep, jumping's basic. This is an anime game, but there's no universal like air action. You can't block while jumping, kind of. Uh, and you can't like air dash, you can't double jump. Some characters can. And you can kind of air dash, but we'll get there. Um, but for the most part, it's like basic Street Fighter rules where you just, you know, you're vulnerable while jumping, but your jump attacks are plus. Uh, yep. Success. Success. Yeah, dashing. So you can double tap to dash. Or you can press forward plus A plus B. Which I'll get, I'll get to the buttons in a minute. Um, same with back dashing. And uh, every character's forward dash is a run, so you well not every character, but almost every character's forward dash. You can start. You can start running and then do a move. And in this game, you have two running specific normals. So this is standing standing B. This is forward B. It's a command normal. But I also have running B. Which knocks them over like that. So your running B and your running C are unique. Standing C, there is no forward C, but I can do running running C to get that move. If you let go of forward it'll 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 cancel it. So you need to be hitting forward and in a forward dash state to get your uh, running. Now, you can buffer this though. You can just buffer, like during this move, I can buffer forward forward C and it'll do it. So it's not like Tekken where you have to time it right. Uh, you can actually just input it that way and it works. Uh, it's not like Naoto from Blaze Blue. You can buffer it. Uh, okay. Backstep. Uh, you're invulnerable during backsteps, yes. And just like forward dash, you can press A plus B to backdash. Okay, here's your assault. This is the first um, major mechanic that's not in most fighting games. You have assault. It is a short hop from KOF. Uh, you have a little bit more uh, pre-jump startup, but it's still really fast. 
Um, yeah, so you have assault, right? Now normally, oh come on, uh, okay, I can use that. Normally you, you can chain your attacks in the air. But if you assault, you cannot. See, I can chain my attacks in the air, but if I do an, an assault, I can't, there's nothing I can do. I get one, one hit during an assault, and that's it. Success. Um, however, you can also do an aerial assault, and an aerial assault does not have that downside. So this is your like air dash. It's kind of slow. It's like a, it's a little bit faster than like a Guilty Gear Strive air dash, uh, but it's still, it's not as good as like OG Guilty Gear air dashes. Um, and with this one, you can actually do a forward dash input. So you can do forward plus A plus B. Uh, and by the way, you can see my inputs down below. I have A, B, C, and D written in. Those are the only ones you need besides like a start button, I guess. Um, but I also have this button is A plus B, so I can dash with it. And this button is A plus B plus C, which we'll get into what that does later. What? Oh, I did jumping forward C <laughs> instead of jumping C. Uh, this is a new mechanic to this game, Creeping Edge. Uh, down, forward, and D lets you move while evading the opponent's attack. So this is a KOF roll. Just straight up, you are invincible until you're not, and then you recover. Uh, <clears throat> using that close range can help you slip behind the opponent. You can use Creeping Edge to close in on the opponent while evading their attacks. However, the risk of punishment is high, so you must use it selectively. Creeping Edge movement and effects vary depending on your character. This is literally a KOF roll. Although, notice my grid gauge. At the bottom, it goes down. Uh, dashes and back steps can be executed with forward A plus B or back A plus B respectively. They function identically, but they allow you to execute them much faster. <clears throat> yeah, so... The thing about this is that Usually it's faster, just like by default it's faster, but if I'm going to be doing like a dashing attack like this, C works, right? I can, right, because I can do, I can do it pretty quick, like that, but you can't buffer it. Like, it doesn't work. Let's see if we can do this. Like, it, it, you just can't do it. It doesn't work. Uh, if, if, if you're going to do it, like, during combos, or, like, you, you, you know you want to do a dash normal really fast, don't use the button input. Use the double, double forward input. Uh, but, yeah. Dash momentum, yes, yeah, so this is typical for games that aren't KOF. You can dash, and you'll get the momentum of the dash during the action. Even if I jump straight up, I get a little bit of that momentum, see? applies to attacks. I can move forward while attacking. I can move forward while jumping. I can move forward. Um, also, if I just want to block, I still like move forward a good distance. Right? But the instant I press back to block, I'm blocking. So this is extremely important. There's going to be a tutorial for it later, I'm pretty sure. Uh, where you can just, like, dash blocking lets you move forward while blocking. Because your character keeps going with their momentum, but you're still blocking.
Very powerful option. And here it is. Using a dash card, you can approach your opponent without taking damage, even if they are spamming projectiles. Oh, well, I failed. Oh, she's just doing it instantly, okay. This character is stupid, by the way. In case you couldn't tell. She's like an, in <laughs> she's like an Injustice character. You can attack by pressing the attack button. If attack hits, you'll deal damage. <clears throat> Probably should have started with this one. Uh, try out different attacks, as they all vary in damage and range. Success. <laughs> uh, yeah, health. Obviously. Remember the health gauge will turn orange when your health is low. And that means something in this game. Um, we'll, we'll get there. Try to defeat the opponent, attack them until you deplete their health gauge. Okay. now. Okay. Okay. On it. Normal attacks are attacks you can perform with just... yeah. Normals, light, medium, heavy. Yep. Crushing attacks. Uh, not every crushing attacks are low. Nothing in this game is universal, basically. It's always... There's always, like, variances depending on the character you play. Jump attacks. Let's see if this bug is still in the game. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'll press the A button to perform an A attack. Okay. Uh, B attack, strike a grape. I mean, this is very character dependent. This is not like a... Hard and fast rule. C buttons, higher range, more damage, but longer startup. That's kind of true. I think it's the case that every standing C has more startup and damage than every standing B. Or for for every character, their their normals go up in damage as you go up in letters. I think. Uh, but pressing a button while inputting a certain direction, yeah, command normals. Hold the direction when you press a button, you get a command normal. Um, I believe every character has a 3C. I don't think House has one, actually. Maybe not. But the, it, characters have a ton of command of command normals in this game. Like It's more than Street Fighter VI. <laughs> they have a lot of extra normals. But you only have three buttons, not six buttons. Like normals, command normals can also be triggered from a passing link, which I haven't gone over yet. Okay, so if you pick... If, hold on, let me, let me go back. <clears throat> if you pick... Tutorial... All, display all, it's gonna put you in the wrong order. So you should probably do all the novices first, then all the beginners, then all the intermediate, then all the advanced and all the experts. But I'm gonna keep doing this. Since I started it this way. Because we haven't talked about passing link yet. Anyway, like normals, command normals can also be triggered from a passing link. However, remember that each command normal has different options for canceling after it hits. I guess. Hide has a command normal like forward B and 3C. 3C has passing link options on hit or guard, but forward B has none. In general, if a move uh, keeps the opponent on the ground, you can can't you, you you can chain it into other normals. Usually. 
And then if it's a move that like launches the opponent uh, or knocks them off their feet, it's kind of like hit or miss whether or not you can chain out of it with other normals. Uh, but almost every normal in the game, if not every normal in the game, can be cancelled with specials. <clears throat> Has no place on your opponent guards both hit. Guards both. Okay, so forward B the first hit. Oh yeah, so there there are some cancels that only work on hit. Most work on hit and block. Uh, very few cancels work on whiff. There is one in particular that does work on whiff. You can whiff something and do a chain shift. But... We're not at chain shift yet. You could just study, study them thoroughly. You got it. I promise. Dash attack. Powerful moves that allow you to attack while pressing your opponent. Dash attacks are mainly used for combos, from my experience. Uh, yeah, but you can't chain with them. First of all, you can't chain into them because they're you have to dash first. Duh. And you can't chain out of them either. Yep. That was not dash you see. An increase is when you hold a button down. Uh, several attacks in this game, like, like just normals, you can charge them and they'll get buffed. Not these, like the, like his his other C's, his B doesn't get a charge. Like his jump, but his his standing C and his jumping C can both be charged. And it's called increase. Usually, this means more damage. Some attacks can get new properties, new hitboxes, <coughs> and the startup increase is very small. Yeah, they put up the consecutive. Yeah, okay, so. Um, every character except for Waldstein can do this. Um, also, in general, you can't repeat attacks in a chain. So I'm just going to explain passing link right now. Okay. You can use any of your six normals. So standing, crouching A, B, and C. You can use them all in any order you want. In any order you want. But you can't repeat. So I can't do B A B. But I can do B A crouching B. That works, because they're separate. The standing and, and crouching are separate. Um, if you do an A, you can do the same A multiple times. But I can't loop back around after I've left. So I can do crouch A, crouch A, but I can't do crouch A, crouch B, crouch A. Once you leave the crouch A, you can't go back to it. Um, without starting an, a brand new chain. Uh, so I could do things like... BC launch. Let's see. Let's see. BC launch. And then BC again, because I've started a, a brand new chain, that works. Um, but I can't, within the same chain, go back to 5B once I've used it. Command normals are the same, and they count as a different move. So I can do BC, crouch B, forward B. Or I can do, I can do uh, crouch C, charge, stand C. Down forward C to launch. Like that. That that works. So you have six normals. And you have all your command normals. You can do them in any order you want with no repeats until you end the chain and start a new one. Uh, and also, as you can see here, you can chain your crouching light as many times as you want. You can out of range. Um, your standing light punch... Or your, your standing light is different. Okay, we're not... Okay, I guess we're, we're going on from that. Um, <clears throat> but standing light has an auto combo to it. So we'll talk about standing light when we get to the auto combo. Whenever that is. Uh, poking. What is this tutorial? <laughs> yeah, 
right, so there I I, I, I pressed forward B at drastically different timings, but they all worked because it goes it's, and it's active for a long time. Uh, when your opponent attacks, misses, or whiffs, hit the back of the whiff punish. Got it. What? Why didn't that count? Okay, I have to wait for. Yeah, I, I have to wait for it to finish. Okay. Um. So that was a counter hit. We'll talk about counters later. I don't think the old game had a high counter tutorial in it, but it does have high counters. So we'll see if this game added a high counter tutorial. Uh, against opponents that attack from afar, you'll have to do more than standing guards. Oh, attack from the air. It's also important to intercept their advances with anti-air attacks. Attacks hit high spots. So you can't... By default, you can't block in the air. Uh, so anti-air is a thing. And there are, like, shurikens with, with full invincibility on them. <clears throat> attacks are diagonally upward while keeping your stance low. Make ideal anti-air attacks. <laughs> Counter. That's a pretty good anti air, but it's not as DP. <laughs> Do a DP instead. I'm putting consecutive attack commands regardless of whether your opponent guarded. Yeah, so committing. This is a, this is a hit confirm. Yeah, this is a hit confirm. Let's practice hit confirming. So this is. The first part of Hicken for me. This is the safe string that you can do on hit or block, and it's safe. Here's the confirming. If your attack connects, you should change what you're doing and do a combo. So I'm, I'm doing crouch A, crouch B, and then I'm going to crouch C if it hits. Very important to practice this. Okay, he's not blocking. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Very important that you don't go to the crouch C on block because it's punishable. Although you can cancel it, so it's whatever. That's a bad example, but it is an example. Attribute. Okay, yeah, so this is. I'm already A, so I'm probably gonna do forward B to hop over or low. Or not forward B, it's down forward C, I guess. Yeah, it is. Hop right over that low. Low crush. Uh, some attacks do this. This is not really a common feature in the game, though. Some characters have it. Other characters don't. Uh, sometimes you duck under high hitting attacks. Other times you jump over low attacks. Time takes before you can act again is known as recovery. Strong attacks have long recovery, making you susceptible to being punished when your opponent. So this is punish. This is block punishment. He's gonna do a DP. Ah, oh, you see. So this attack is safe on block. I can block after it, but this attack is not safe on block. You keep the punish. There's no punish indicator, I believe. Uh, for most attacks. Deferring recovery times after an attack connects are due to frame data. Wow, they actually updated this. Okay, so frame difference is your frame advantage and frame disadvantage. I just say advantage and it could be like an, a negative advantage. That's how I usually word it. Frame difference is a weird term. Different frame lengths, let's compare them. Oh, cool. They're doing one guard jump. Trying to brute force your offensive moves is a big d disadvantage. Only be open to retaliation. <clears throat> That's a good advice. Memorizing precise frame beta for every single attack is a tall order, but as long as you grasp the general concept, you'll make better offensive and defensive decisions. I agree.
plus on block. <clears throat> Passing Link, you can reduce the recovery time of an attack. Trick to link an attack. It has a short recovery. Ah, the trick is to. So, okay. This is very common because you can chain in any order you want. Uh, most games, you have to go up, like A to B to C. And you can't go B to C to A. But in this game, you can do whatever you want. You, you, you can do A, B, C. You can also do C, B, A. You can also do B, C, A. You can also do B, A, C. Like, any order works. And so, what happens is that, so normally, uh, yeah, th so this is punishable on block. Oh, come on. That's punishable on block. Oh, it says punish now. They added a, a punish indicator. Um, but, it, but I can chain into my light normal, and even if the light normal whiffs, I still recover faster. Oh, that didn't whiff. Re redo that. So, no cancel is a punish. Oops, I... Hey, stop, stop hitting. There we go. Even if the crouching light kick, or light, misses, I still recover fast and, uh, faster than if I didn't chain it at all. Um, the only problem with that is that maybe you'll get counter hit, I guess. Um, and also there's like shield to worry about and there's like if if you make the opponent block they build some grid some grid gauge but other than that there's really no downsides to going for that like every single time or if you want to do something else like a cancel to a special then you would do that instead a counter hit okay we're talking about counters finally so counter hits in this game don't deal increased damage i think unless they changed it they only deal increased hit stun. Um, but otherwise, they're the same. If you hit the opponent during the startup of their attack, they'll get countered. What am I doing? What is it? Oh. Counter hit. Oh, I see what it wants me to do. Rude. Oops, let's see. That's what you should do. Oops, wrong button. Oh, that. There we go. Nice, it threw in some uh, some of that uh, cancel shenanigans from, from the last... from, from, from the last... Uh, tutorial. Specials! Finally on the specials. You've already talked about poking and dash guarding, but you haven't talked about how to do a special move. High performance moves that generally deal a lot of damage. I guess. Not really. Uh, they're, they're more utility. They're more committal, usually. And they do something pretty extreme. Like, like they're more extreme than your normal attacks. As with movement commands, which attacks can, can also invert, yeah, when you face the direction. Okay, let's do this one. Sure you can! Um, this game has quarter circles. Um, it has very few half circles, but it does have half circles. And they made half circles easier in this game. I need to lab that. Um, it has shuriken inputs. And it has... Down and down inputs. And it has one character with 360s. Like Zangief. Um, is that it? Uh, there's also a charge character who has all of the charges. So she has charge back forward. She has charge down up. She also has charge forward back. And she has charge up down. She has all four of them. <laughs> what a weird character. Um, I think that's it for the inputs. Besides just like holding a direction. Oh, there's, there's also a Zon Reskin notion, which is forward back forward. Plus a button, but it's like optional. Um, the properties of special, of special like vary depending on which button is pressed. Yes, yeah, so you have the A version and the B version. The C version might be another Mutatus version, but there's also uh, most specials um, have a super-ish version or an EX version, 
when you press the C button, so we'll get there. So here's, here's, uh, let's do light, down, down, light, down, down, A, and this is down, down, B. Longer startup, but more range. Yep, specials deal chip damage on blocks. You can't kill. You, you can't kill with the chip damage, though. Um, projectile. Also, chip damage is generally pretty light. Like, mo most anime games have pretty high chip damage or, like, a high threat of chip damage. Uh, this game, not so much. Chip damage is pretty low. Like, there's a character that damages himself much faster than he takes chip damage. So, uh, projectiles are invulnerable and cannot. Uh, that's not true. Um, as a general rule of thumb, yes. If you like punch a fireball, it's not going to do anything. You're just going to get hit by the fireball. Um, but Hyde's sword, for example, can break fireballs. There's plenty of moves that can destroy fireballs. Uh, two different project like like if both players use a projectile they will cancel each other out um but yeah this is just basic stuff fireball fast fireball invulnerable so the, yeah there's a visual indicator when you perform a invincible attack in this game Um, but there are downsides to using them, obviously. Uh, but they're also like built in. Like there are certain cancels that you can't do if your move was invincible. Uh, kind of similar to modern Guilty Gears, they actually have that too. Invincible reversal. Counter. You did it. You're amazing. Remain commands. Train special. Ah, oh, yeah, so there's like Rekka stuff. Let's get, let's get out of Rekka. Oh, come on. Rekkas. Okay, here we go. EX moves. You use the C button. Not every special has an EX version. Uh, sometimes the C version is just another meterless version. Uh, yeah, if you attempt, if if you do it with C, you don't have enough meter. It it goes back to the B version. Yeah. Uh, that move I just did uh, failed to do actually. I'll do it this time. Oh, it's different now. At least I'm pretty sure I did it right. Let's try again. Yeah, that move's gone. Huh. Huh. The move's just gone. Uh, but in the previous game, there were some super old, like, EX version only moves. Um, where you couldn't do the A and B version, or you, you only had the C version. Uh, infinite Worth. So every character's Infinite Worth is the same motion. Um, they're all invincible and they all do a, a lot of damage. I missed. And that's a basic super, and it costs double. So you can see in the bottom left my meter. This is the EX one. So, in the bottom left, of my meter, your your like your your C version of, of special moves cost half of it, so 100 points. But your but your half circle forward D costs double. So it's like a super super, I guess. Um, infinite worth EXS only available if you have less than 30% life remaining, and it's all four buttons. You get this big cinematic super. But there are downsides to it, which I'll get into later, I'm assuming. Unless they said it. Let me see if they said it. 
No, they didn't. I guess we'll talk about it later. Unless they removed it. Uh, though infinite worth is powerful. Oh, here we go. Performing an infinite worth while you're not in vorpal state will leave you in grid break state. Hmm. Two things we haven't talked about yet. Cool. Nice tutorial. I think I finish off the opponent. The vorpal state will end when the infinite worth excess does. Attack lands, the drawbacks won't occur. Okay. So, yeah, so using this move gets rid of your Vorpal, but you'll still get the Vorpal damage bonus if, like, like during the move. So it gets rid of Vorpal after it's over, basically. It's, it's, I, th I think that's what that's saying. Canceling. Yep. 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 Wow, we are we are really going out of order, huh? Combos. B button and C. I already did this like seven thousand times. It's canceling and normal attack is special attack. Yeah. A bit tricky, no it's not. Been doing it for ten years. Uh, I've been saying 10 years for like 3 years, so... <laughs> I'll be doing it for 13 years. Because the gap between two attacks of the jump is called jump canceling. So jump attacks only work on hit. Um, almost every normal can be jump canceled, but it only works on hit and you can only do it once per combo. Unless you chain shift. If you change shift, it resets it, and you can do another jump. Oh, it's now quarter forward. Okay, yeah, so I know they did a bunch of stuff with force function. They gave characters new force functions, so maybe it costs grid now or something. Um, we'll see how it goes. Smart steer. This is your auto combo. This is important. Um, so if I just hit A and then A, that is the same as if I hit A and B. It's identical. They're the same. Um, likewise, if I hit A, 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 I get A, B, C, right? So there's no difference between me hitting A, A, A and A, B, C. The one difference that you can do is you can bypass the no repeats rule. So say I do B and then A, A. That lets me do that. I can't do B A B because I can't repeat the B, but the auto combo, it, it, if, if I do the auto combo, I can actually bypass that rule and get the same attack. So, 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 so I can even do B C A A A like this, like that. And I've repeated the B and the C because I've did the B or the C first and then the auto combo version. Um, hit the opponent with smart stare. So they've, they've added a new one. What is that? What just, I, I have no idea what just happened. That's a new mechanic. Um, also, A plus B. Oh. A plus B is a move now. It looks kind of like... I don't even know. Okay. Reminds me of Type Lumina. Wait, is this custom here? I don't think so. Um. Finishing move with A plus B. Hmm, it doesn't say yet. Maybe it'll say it later. Alright, I finished it. Also, it'll it'll do a super for you if you want to. And you have the meter for it. Uh, not optimal stuff. The auto combo is for if you don't know your combos. Um, 
that's one of the first things you should learn is what your real combos are. Cancel a normal or another, yeah. We've been doing this game. Yeah, can't use the same move twice. Crusher attacks, yeah. Combine standing and crushing with passing link, of course, since standing attacks and crushing attacks with the same button for attacks. Yeah. Incorporating many attacks and passing link was saved because you're coming true. Ugh. It's pretty close to optimal combo, I think. <laughs> you just gotta charge it. Passing link works more than just ABC sequence. Yep, you can do whatever order you want. CDA. Passing link on jump attacks, yes. Also works. Come on. You can also go whatever order you want in the air as well, that works. Including air command rumbles and air specials. Well, not air, not not including air specials. We, we can cancel into air specials from normals. Into a special attack command. Yeah, it's just cancel. Yeah, this is how you form basic combos. In most games, infinite worth. Yeah, so you can cancel from your normals. So, okay, okay. so you you can chain all your normals together, almost all of them together, uh, in any order you want. And then from your normals, you can go to specials. And from specials, you, you, you can go to EX specials or supers. And you can also skip straight from normals to supers. That also works. So it's pretty intuitive to fit like a super on the end of your combo because your specials just cancel onto it. So I would say learn one good combo that just works all the time and then learn how to super at the end of it. And then you're good to go on combos for a long time. Um, this game's combo system is actually pretty complex. So if you want to optimize your damage, you're going to have to pay attention to what you hit them with. Uh, whether or not whether or not it was a counter hit things like that um, But you don't need that but that, that's like advanced stuff uh, Here's a jump attack close to ground and immediately perform a ground attack. Yeah, this is a jumping combo Whoops you Can also do that straight from an assault as well it's faster. Damage scaling, yeah. This game has uh, typical anime damage scaling, I think. Oh, I'm just gonna it starts with a. Yeah, so, you, so there, there's two types of damage scaling. It's not gonna tell us in this tutorial. Um, there's your general scaling, which is every time you land an attack in a combo, there's a fixed value that it multiplies the scaling you buy. So say it's, say it's 90%. Um, the first hit will deal 100%, and if that hit has a scaling of 90, the next hit will deal 90%. And then if that hit also had a scaling of 90%, it'll, th then the next hit will go down to 90% of 90%, which is 81%. Uh, and it just keeps multiplying lower, 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 and lower until eventually you're doing hits that deal like no damage. Uh, the second type of scaling is initial scaling. So your entire combo after the first hit will be scaled down by a certain amount based on what the first attack in the combo was. So like lights and certain jumping uh, normals will deal uh, initial proration to your combo. So the whole combo does less damage. Um, but it, it, if you use those attacks mid combo, it doesn't apply. It's 
only it, it only applies to the first attack. And it comes such as B. Yeah, here we go. So this is talking about initial paration. A B C does less damage than B C. <laughs> because you start with an A and this is the uh, initial paration. You bounce your opponent off the wall. So yeah, so you, you have wall bounces and ground bounces. You can only get three of them in a, in a combo. If you do the third one, the combo's over. They're invincible. The color of the what? What did that say? The color of the gauge shown under their hit counter will change color. Interesting. Wish I could see it. It's kind of hidden right now, isn't it? Uh... There it is. That it's on the far left. It like turns orange or something. Oops. Come on. I'm not good at doing combos that don't work. Smart steer, you can use moves that you've already used with passing link. Yeah, I talked about this. Using the auto combo lets you repeat moves. Uh, excuse me. Lets you repeat, but, but it, it, it doesn't work backwards. If I use AAA, I can't like, I can't use B and C anymore. Even though ABC is the same as AAA, I can't. It it, 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 it it doesn't work the other way around. You, you have to do the auto combo second. Mm -hmm. Hit stun deterioration. <laughs> That's what this is. Hit stun deterioration. Uh, again, normal rules apply. I think. I think. Um, in anime games, your hit stun throughout a combo goes down over time. Not based on number of hits and also uh there's initial deterioration which is to say if you start a combo with like a crouching light kick or something or a crouching light then the timer doesn't start at zero the the the, the, the timer starts at like three seconds or whatever so you get three less seconds to get a good combo um i don't like this system but it's in every anime game all of them. Uh, yeah, so there's same attack limit. If you do certain attacks, uh, they become invincible. It's as if you had done three like wall bounces. You're allowed to do, you're allowed to do the move once, but you can't do it twice. Because if you do it twice, they become in. Well, you you can do it twice, but that ends the combo, right there. Delayed can yeah, so all of your chains and cancels can be delayed by a lot. Uh, and that's how you form frame traps. All of it can be delayed. What is this? Oh, I see. That's a combo application. Uh, block your opponent's attacks and nullify or reduce their... What we're talking about guarding now? <sighs> okay. Wow, how do I... Wow, I can guard now. Wow. Amazing. Sure glad I learned this uh, an hour into the, in, in, into the tutorial. Standing guard. attacks that can only be blocked by crouching guards. Yep. Success. Overheads. Powerful and can only be blocked while standing. Yep. Uh, there's no universal overhead. 
except for like jump attacks, obviously. Guard switching. Yeah, basic stuff. Oops, just three. Okay, yeah, so if you're in the air, you can still block projectiles only. Good lord. Got one. Got one. Got one. Okay. Uh, you can block projectiles while airborne. But you can't block anything else. 50-50, use a crouching guard to watch for the overhead. So most overheads like this are reactable. Most of them are reactable. They're like on the vert, like they're like 25 plus frames. There are exceptions. Um, but for the most part, low high is not a common mix up. Also, there's cross up protection. Cross up protection. Uh, so, even if I hold like toward her, like I'm gonna hold left, I still block. There's huge, cro like a ton of cross-up protection where if the opponent swaps sides with you, uh, you can just block both ways. It, it, it works both ways. Um, some characters can get around this using various techniques, like Sith. <laughs> but for the most part, cross-ups are also not a very good mix-up. Your main mix-up is throwing. Strike throw, and then as soon as the opponent is worried about strike throw, you can do other stuff to supplement that, which is good. Uh, when you're blocking an incoming attack, you, you cannot do anything but guard. Yeah, this is block stun. They call it guard, we just call it block stun. And look, I can hold forward. Oh, I can hold. I can hold down forward and I, and I won't block any, or, or, and I'll keep blocking. Like, I'm not holding down left, I'm, I'm holding down right, and I keep blocking. Um, so that is absolute guard. Once you start blocking, you can't stop. Although you do have to still worry about lows and overheads. Um, fuzzy guard is a technique that involves switching guard stances. Yeah, okay, so, uh, Nanase here has a flippy move uh, but there's two versions one of them is a slow overhead the other one starts to flip and then she like goes low but it's fast so if i see her doing the flip i can block low and then and then block high and that's a fuzzy guard like that yeah see um so if she does the low, I block low and then let go of, of block later. If she does the overhead, I block low and then let go of low block on time to block the overhead. Classic fuzzy, yeah, f fuzzy mashing the Street Fighter 6. Also KOF does this too. Um, yeah. Fuzzy mash, throw, Th throws a short range but are unblockable. Can't hit airborne opponents with it though. You can do air throws with some characters, not all characters. And air throws can only hit airborne opponents, not grounded ones. Uh, and you can hit with throws during like hit stun and block stun, but it, it's breakable. Uh, back throw, switch sides. Also, Hyde can combo off of his throw, throw if he has him in the corner. Uh, mid screen, no combo, but it's in the corner. They bounce off, and you get a combo. Just the short range can be easily interrupted with an attack. Yeah, okay. So it, it's it's not their range. So there was no tutorial for this in the old game. So I'm gonna say it now. There is extended throw invincibility in this game. Um, so that is to say, if I block a move for example uh let's say i block a jump in right that, that that's plus a billion 
Um, and the opponent wants to throw me after I block their jump in. I am additionally invincible to throws for extra time. Okay. Um, I'm going to put an asterisk next to it because I'm not actually invincible. Um, the way it works in most games is you're invincible to throws while blocking. While I'm block stunned, you can't be thrown. And and there's an additional seven frames, let's say. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. But let's say there's seven frames after where I've recovered. I can do attacks. I can do movement. I can do whatever I want. But I cannot be thrown during that time. Okay. Um, and that means that I can press a button and it beats throws every time. Like, like if I know my opponent wants to do a strike throw mix up, I'll just mash. Because mashing beats the strike throw mix up because they have because they have to delay the throw in order to throw me. And that works off of hit stun and block stun and wake ups. Okay. Hit stun and block stun in this game are different because you can get thrown during hit stun and block stun. If you are thrown during hit stun or block stun, it, there's a gold effect and you can tech it for more time. The, the tech window is doubled and it's like 28 frames. So you have plenty of time to react and break. So it's effectively, it's effectively the same uh, most of the time. Um, so during block stun and for like, I don't know, seven frames after block stun, if you are thrown, you can tech the throw and it's a gold throw and, 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 and you can break it. The difference, there are two differences. One is you cannot tech throws if the throw throws you out of an action. So say I start an attack, like, like say I mash, say I, say I mash an attack. Um, thinking my opponent will throw me. Well, that doesn't really work anymore because there's now they're throwing me out of my move and I can't break the throw anymore. Um, also, you have throw reject miss, TRM, or in this game it's called throw vulnerability. Um, if you press A plus B, which is the throw tech input, you cannot tech throws anymore for like 10-ish frames or something like that. Um, Normally it's not a problem because if you press throw first, then you're throwing them and then they tech your throw. Um, but if you're doing it like... Um, if they do an, an attack and you thought it would be a throw, um, you might be able to, you know, block the attack and then tech the throw because of because the throw tech window is so big, but then they can cancel that attack into a throw, and then that canceled throw will hit you after you've pressed the throw tech buttons, because you thought they would lead with the throw, they actually led, led, led with the attack, and then now you can't tech that throw because you just pressed AD, and it's called throw tech, uh, throw reject miss. Let's just put it, pressure, see an opening try to throw it. I don't know what that was. That was a weird, a weird one. Uh, throw break. The opponent who throw breaks is plus eight in this game. Um, and that's important because you have crouch decking. Come on, bro. It's a 14 frame break window, so. There we go. So if, if you break the opponent's throw, you're plus eight. Be able to move earlier than your opponent. Thanks to the trim advantage, you can trap. Yep. That's the other button. Uh, no, nothing guaranteed there, though. If, if you have like a plus, or if you have like an uh, an eight frame normal that hits that far, it, it, it can just it, it they're I, I think they're invincible until they recover, so it's no combo off of a throw break. <laughs> uh, guarding a rocket attacks, but you lose the throws if you're anticipating a throw and try a throw break. You'll lose the exchange if your opponent goes for a strike. Kind of. Force your opponent into difficult strike throw to make up whenever you can. Uh, 
Yeah, so that's the mix-up I was talking about earlier, but he didn't complete it. Um, I can block and then delay tech because the throw tech window is 14 frames. Uh, which means that I can survive both. Unless he does a TRM setup. Uh, drift throw. Cool. So if, if, if you, you can dash and throw it on the same frame, and you'll get more range on your throw. Uh, as far as I know, there's no reason to not do this. You should always do that. And, and on my setup, I, I just press... Oh, whoops. I, I just press D and the button next to D, and it works. Because that button is A plus B. Actually, slight window of time in which you can perform a throw break after you've been... Yeah, it's 14 frames. If you're about to be thrown, there's no need to panic. Stay calm and break it later. What I can do is... Yeah, correct. Yep. Classic that's in every fighting game that isn't Guilty Gear XX. Because that game has like a two-frame throw break window. Throws in certain special techs can grab your opponent while they're block stunned. Yep. But you'll get a gold grab. And this is reactable. Uh, some... Uh, okay. This game has command grabs, but some command grabs are weird. You're going to have to learn what they do on a character-specific basis. Because some grabs just always cause a gold flash. I didn't do that right, but it still worked. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This is TRM. Yep, there it is. There we go. I mashed throw break. It didn't work. Too early. Yeah, I'm mashing throw break more than once every 14 frames. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely pressing A plus D during the throw break window, but it, 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 it doesn't count because I got thrown while I was TRM'd. Uh, if you input down plus A plus D, you'll perform a... Yes, yeah, so this is the classic crouch tech. Classic crouch tech. Um, although you have crouching shield in this game, which is down back D, so crouching shield will take priority over crouching light kick or light, which is why it's said to do straight down, not down back. Uh, throw back crouching and options stuff will always lose to an assault, kind of. Yep, because assaults go over it. It was removed? Oh, they changed it. But they didn't change the tutorial? Oh, let me test that. Oh. Why? That's so weird. Okay, if you do down, back. So if you crouch block plus throw, you'll get a throw. But if you do straight down, you'll get crouch light. That's weird. Why? Why? Why wouldn't they just give you regular crouch? Whatever. Whatever. That's strange. Uh, yep, anterior option select, this is the KOF mix-up. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so this is... You, you, you can combine input priority with the crouch tech. So, if I do, in this case, down forward, plus throw, and the C button, uh, I'll get hides down forward C. Which is a good anterior. Uh... I'm doing it wrong. Oh, I'm not pressing C on the right frame. Do a jump. <laughs> what? Why didn't that work? I pressed... You can see on my inputs in the bottom left. I did down forward D-A-C. 
Why didn't that work? I got a standing throw. Yeah, you get- What? Okay, so there, I didn't press D. You, you have to car this now. You didn't have to do this before. If I want the down forward C, I have to press the C first before the D. Or the A. Uh, you you can't press all three at once. You have the car right now. So that, that tutorial is wrong. Um, I can prove it too. By turning on this button. And holding down the B button. So I'm holding down B. If I press this, this button, I'll get... Yeah, I'll get... I'll get D, A, and C. And it, it does not give you down forward C. It gives you the throw. So you do need to actually Kara this. Like that. Um, as long as you, you press C first, and not the other two on the same frame, you're good. Rick's so that was just what your opponent does nothing. Your type of whiff. Okay, throw break brat. Throw, throw break. Okay, so th this one I think they changed to make it easier, right? Yeah, okay, so this one works. I, I can press A, B, D and get a back step. I did it wrong. Wow, that was a one frame window. Holy crap. <laughs> that was a miracle. Yeah, so yeah, I, I can backdash and throw a break at the same time. And it beats all of them, unless I'm cornered. <laughs> and they added that one. That was not in the game previously. Pre previously, you had to Kara the Kara the back dash into D. Throw a break. Yeah, th th this one's weird. I don't know what it's talking about. Do, pe do people actually do this? <laughs> it's, it's like the Street Fighter Five option slay, but not quite. Also, it's a pain on Leverless. Throw me. Thank you. But it works, I guess. Uh, I, I guess it's better than the path than the previous one because you can do it in the corner. Throw break attack option select can lose against faster attacks, which will s uh, with throw break veil off option select. Yeah. So, you, so veil off is invincible. It hasn't talked about it yet because this tutorial was out of order. Um, you'll throw break if it grabs you and otherwise. You can also just mash Veil off, and you're, and you're invincible to throws, so... Um, Cushion Guard, once you your opponent and just throw range, but a split second before pressing that. Yeah. Obviously, that is also your super if you have less than 30% life. I gotta get rid of that button, by the way. Low attacks and only block for the crashing... Wow! Low attacks, huh? You just taught me 25 different option selects, now we're going for lows. Interesting. Very interesting. They should have ordered these differently. All jump attacks are also overheads. That's technically not true. From would stop using crashing guards, try and jump attack on them. Jump attack is assault. I just did that. Uh, let's see.
<clears throat> Empty jump lows are not good in this game. You can do it if you want to. Aerial assault can be cancelled. That double overhead. Classic anime stuff. You, 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 you can do double overhead or you can do one overhead then land and go low. That's a real mix up. So like that mix up. I, uh, I can do double overhead. Like that. Or I can do one overhead low. It's not the same timing though. I'll also throw you instead. So that 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 is a real mix up. Uh, also, you can do uh, jump attack overhead into low like this, or jump attack or jump into uh, air assault uh, if they're cornered. Like that. And that might catch them. Anyway. What? Weird. Next. It takes a shorter landing recovery times on assault. You can intentionally. Okay, so your landing recovery in this game is zero if you do nothing from a normal jump. It becomes. Uh. A low value, but it's not zero. It's like two or three or four, depending on the character or the move you use. If you do a jumping at uh, attack while jumping, if you do an empty assault, if you just do 6D and stop and then land, you have this huge landing recovery that takes forever. Uh, you can also do a jump attack during the assault and it will revert back to the non assault version, so the two or three or four frames. But what this is going to do is you can start the attack and then land before the attack connects and it'll cancel the attack and it, and it will still give you the shortened uh, landing recovery. Like, like this. And in his case, he also has the charge to make it, uh, to make it easier. Oh, I gotta do this. Um, so that's that. That might make your empty jumps a lot better if you do that. Uh, but it's still not very good. <laughs> it exists, but only if the opponent's not ready to do the other option select that they mentioned uh, a long time ago, where you press standing A at the right time and it both blocks the jump attack and hits them after after they land. Uh, sort of break anti your option select is a strong... We've been over this. Oh, I see. It's how to bait it. So, so, so this was the down forward A plus C plus D. That doesn't work anymore. But you can do down forward C and then Kara it to throw. To throw a break. And it works. I'm gonna push your it's so yeah. Whatever, it worked. Yep, just backdash to avoid the throw, then whip punish it. String can take attacks. Guarding is called a guard string. This is a true block string. Yep, true block strings. You normally don't want true block strings. Um, there are, like, sometimes you just want to waste time, uh, because of the grid system. But most of the time you don't want to do that. You want to actually go for a mix-up. And in those cases, you don't want to do a true block string. Because if you do a true block string, that is you hitting them during their block stun, which means they can't not block. Unless you do a low attack. Um, so... Most of the time you want to delay your attacks so they're not a true block string. They're barely not a true block string. So you're you're putting a gap in between your attacks. There is a non-zero amount of time in between their block stun ending 
and your next attack connecting. But it's it's like it's it's greater than zero, but it's not big enough for them to actually exploit. So they can try to exploit it. Like if it, it, if you're too early, they can't even attempt to exploit it because they're in block stun. But if you wait a little bit, they can try to exploit it. But if they but if if, if the gap is really small, more 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 than zero, but less than like five, then the gap is too small to actually do anything except for like backdash or DP and you'll get a frame trap. Very important, frame traps are like the first thing you should learn, honestly. Besides a combo, I, I guess, pick, pick a character, learn a combo, do the tutorial, and then learn your frame your frame traps. Uh, once you've exhausted all your attack options, your block strength is over, your opponent will be able to move before you can. So once your block strength ends, it'll be your opponent's turn to act. Options can end when you're out of cancelable actions, or when the distance between you and your opponent has grown so wide that your act attacks won't won't, won't won't reach that. Okay, yeah. So this is important. Um Cause what happens after frame traps? The opponent blocks. That's what happens. That, that's how you deal with you, I, you can backdash sometimes, and you can DP sometimes. Uh but the main thing you're gonna do is just block. That's the safest thing. It's the it's it's safe. Chip damage is not really a problem, and you actually build grid meter for blocking. It's a little bit, but you build meter for blocking, um, which is really important. So blocking is not a bad choice, unless they throw you, in which case it's a really bad choice. Um, but because of the throw and in invincibility, you always have a chance to act before they throw you, unless it's a gold throw, in which case you can just react and break it on a reaction. Um, so the natural consequence is that you're going to be blocking a lot. Now, if you're the one getting blocked, like you're trying frame traps and they only block, that gives you opportunities to reset. The problem with resets is that sometimes they're very obvious. Um, if I do a string and you know that's the end of the string, like I I, I, I don't have the, the chance to frame trap anymore, uh, then you you know that that's your chance to move. Just, just, just like this says, blocking streams can end when you're out of cancelable actions or when the distance between you and the opponent has grown so wide that your attacks won't, won't, won't reach, right? So at a certain point, the opponent's going to know, oh, he's done this many frame traps, he can't do any more. Um, so you'll need to not reach that point most of the time. Uh, you you can reach that point and it's fine, but you should be able to not reach that point and reset. So the classic example, I think is gonna just tell us this. Uh, well, here we go, this is just, end of block string that is definitely not the end of the block string but okay <laughs> the first one was well kind of but not the second one uh, now you and ender block strings are important with an attack that one recovery time you'll be able to have vulnerable punishments doesn't need attacks yes. stay safe obviously um Overhead. He doesn't have any overheads. Oh, I guess that one. It's also, plus on block. What? Um. Show me some resets. Okay, there we go. That kind of works. Yeah. So. This is a re this is an example of resetting your pressure. So as I said earlier, there's a certain point where you can't frame trap anymore, usually because they're out of range, because all your attacks push you further and further away. Um, let's say you, you you can do five hits before the opponent is pushed further away, and and you can't do any more hits. Maybe you maybe you have like a super that works as a sixth hit, but that's not safe, so we're not going to consider it right now. Uh, but five hits is what you get. A reset is when you do one, two, three, maybe. 
stop at three, and then do something else. Uh, for example, dash forward. Uh, let's say I do one, two, three, stop, dash in, one, two, three, four, five. That also works. Um, this, this lets you reset your pressure, and this only works if you frame trap. There's no point in doing this if you don't frame trap, because there's no chance for your re for your strings to hit the opponent, right? So you need to, you need to use this in conjunction with hit with hit confirms, right? If you do one two three and the three hits them, you need to be able to react to that and do a combo. Um, so that's like the core of the game at a very basic level is can you frame trap? Uh, and the basic way to uh, beat people who block is to just run up and throw them. And the only way that you're allowed to run up and throw them is if you frame trap. Because if you don't frame trap, they're not going to sit still. Okay. Waiting for a peasant to continue. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, that was a good example. Definitely get in a block string on a move with a decent frame advantage and dash in. Yeah, yeah. Block string reset. Obviously, plus on block moves are very good because you can reset your string that way too. But usually, there's ways around it. Um, and in in every case, there's a hole somewhere where you can hit the opponent because they put a gap, a big gap, in between their hits. Uh, some characters are better than others at this. Uh, some characters can get several attacks in a row that are all f like real tight frame traps. And that's really hard to deal with. Um, you can also use other ways. Focus on recent. You can also use like assault instead of a dash, for example. That'll go over their low attacks. Uh, that's pretty good. Block string, high commitment moves. Your opponent anticipates your reset and press A. Yeah, so this is frame traps. When your block string continues, it'll be your turn. Once the string ends, so will your turn. Kind of. If your block string resets, keep your opponent guessing. Yeah. Oh. Frame traps, here we go. Frame traps. So this, so this is the previous one. Counter hit. There you go. Uh, but I can do this. And there's a gap in there. But it's too small of a gap for them to punish. So it's a frame trap. Uh, delay canceling is the main way you get frame trap. Like, obviously, if, if I go straight from A to C, there might be a gap just built in if I do it fast. Like, as fast as possible. But for the most part, like going from A to B to C, you'll need to delay your cancels. Too fast. There you go. The delay your cancels and you'll do it. Um, worst case scenario, it's a four frame window. Uh, it's a four frame window if they do their five frame jab, basically. Although there are moves that are faster, but they usually don't mash them like that. <laughs> Play I, I wonder if there's a character specific four frame normal. I actually don't know. Uh, players recover faster from blocking than they do from being hit. Yeah, so there, so this is a common thing in a lot of games. Um, so that that delay chain I, I just did from A to B, or that non-delayed chain from crouch A to crouch C that I did, that is a frame trap if they block the first hit, meaning their block stun runs out before the second hit connects. But if they get hit by the first attack, it's still a combo because their hit stun runs out after the attack hits. So that is because block stun is shorter than hit stun. So you're that's what you're aiming for. Is you're 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 aiming for that tiny bit of difference from the block stun and hit stun. Uh, and that will let you do one string of inputs at the same time every time. And it'll be both a frame trap and a combo. Uh, 
Some games don't do this, but this game does. For almost every move in the game. Yeah, here we go. A to C is a block string on block, or it or is a frame trap on block, and it will also combo on hit. Sending A can use smart stick, it's not typically be can't okay, yeah, here we go. Finally to this. Uh, if you press 5A, 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 you'll get the auto combo. But you can bypass the auto combo by holding back. So 5A, 4A, 4A. And then if you wanted to, you, you, you could go back to 5A to do the auto combo. Like this. 1, 2, 3, auto combo. Um... Different characters will have different ways of using their A attacks on block. Oh, Excuse me. First second and hits can do in a combo. Block okay, this is what can we try to reset for a frame trap? Which would be to reset doing nothing will beat a frame trap attempt. <laughs> so if the opponent try to reset, it's best to mash out. Yeah. But they're usually gonna be doing that after like at least three hits, because people will suck. And they can't hit confirm from two hits. So most people will do at least three hits and then reset. Um, and then based on your character, you'll get like up to five, six hits before you have to do something else. Characters, uh, opponents try a strong attack through long recovery and block it, trying to interrupt their offense with a fast attack. Mm -hmm. Defending is important to keep guarding. A particularly heavy attack leaves your opponent vulnerable. You'll be able to act again for your opponent. Give me that upper hand. You'll be able to interrupt your opponent's offense. Yeah, so this is basic frame advantage rules. Oh. That's not universal. There are some C's in this game that are plus unblocked. So don't, don't do that. <laughs> And even if they're not plus, it's like you, you still have to make the read on. Well, they're not going to chain after this C, so I'm going to mash. That's still a read that you have to make. Well, you don't have to. So that That's the thing about this game is you, you don't have to. If you if you're pretty sure that they're going to go for a forward dash reset, uh, you can mash. And it might work, uh, but you don't have to because you, because blocking is fine. Uh, you have chip damage, which is not that much, and you're not afraid of throws because you have the th throw uh, in invincibility. Also, throws don't do that don't do that much damage. I, it depends on the character, though. Um, and what are they gonna do? Like overhead you? <laughs> uh, some characters like Olie have pretty threatening overheads, especially with chain shift. But you you can just deal with it, right? Like there's very little risk to you if you just block and like react. Hi puppy. Um But also if you don't do anything, then you don't do anything. Like you're not gonna win because you're not you're not doing anything. Uh so eventually you'll have to do something, right? Because if you don't attack then you'll never win. Um, and in one sense, that makes comebacks harder because if, if you have the life lead, you can just kind of block. But also not because of Vorpal. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, let's see, what is it? A uh, guard thrust. Fine. So they, they, they changed this input. You're wet, puppy. You know what that means? That means you were just outside and I don't need to take you anywhere. Uh, anyway, forward plus A plus B plus C is your guard cancel. This is your typical I'm in block stun, now I just want to spend some meter to knock the opponent away. It's the same as it is in every game, basically. It used to be quarter circle back D, I think. <laughs> And now it's forward plus every button that isn't D. I tell you, your opponent can uh, after blocking their attack. Yeah, this is block punishment. Ah, and they added a new indicator. It says punish. 
Well, it says puny. 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 It's on the far left in gray. Uh, combos to start with B. C attacks do more damage. Yep. It's better to punish with a attack. Yep. Punish. Yeah. Don't punish with a light with a crouching light kick. Punish with. Th so, but but it, it, it depends on the move, right? Because lights are faster. So if a move is barely punishable, you might want to start with a light. But for the most part, things that are punishable, you want to punish with like a C. Also depends on the character. Because some characters have really bad Bs. And so you want to do them first to make sure it actually works in the combo. Uh, Explosional attacks and infinite worse can cause yeah, screen freeze. So all your supers freeze the screen. Uh, so shield deployment will reduce. Yeah, so sh okay, so shields are kind of like faultless defense, not really. Um, the thing you have to know about shields is that they don't cost a meter, but you can't wiggle between them. So as soon as I do a standing shield, I'm stuck in standing shield for a long time, uh, and I can't switch. And so shielding, shielding rules as, as, as for which attacks can be shielded are the same for for blocking. So I can stand shield things that can be stand blocked, and I can crouch th shield things that can be crouch blocked. Um, but if I'm in the air, I can still shield, and uh, th th the same is true. I can block. Uh, I, I can shield things that can be blocked while airborne, but also I can shield more things while airborne, but it's not much. You're still going to get anti-aired if you shield, uh, but you can now deal with air to airs. If 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 both players are in the air, you, you can shield and it'll block their attacks. Uh, also, shield builds you grid meter if it's if it's successful, and if you hold shield down, it will slowly convert one meter to the other. It'll convert your grid into your EXS, I think. Yeah, uh, also your... I thought shield increased your block stun. Huh. I guess it lowers it. I thought it was... Shield. Nope, I'm wrong. My notes are correct. Um, if you are hit, sorry, if, if you shield an attack, you recover three frames faster. Take no chip damage, that's also important, you don't take chip damage. It's already low anyway, so it just completely removes it. Uh, and the pushback is increased. Uh, also, there's a thing with jump attacks I'm sure we'll cover later. Uh, screen freeze reversal. There's an EX special attack. Oh, there it is. Here's the new input. I don't think that cost me grid. Hmm. Uh, when you're hit and knocked into the air, hold down and attack. So this is finally we're talking about ukemis. So just if you're getting comboed in the air, just hold a button down and you'll and you'll tech. But well, keep in mind with the grid system. If you tech backwards, you'll lose some grid, and if you tech forward, you'll build some grid. And there, there's no way to punish uh, a tech, even if you're like really high in the air or whatever. You can't. It doesn't do anything. You're you're invincible until you recover every time. Um, also, you cannot forward tech if your character hits the ground. Well, here we go. Recovery direction. 
Because after you're slammed to the ground, you cannot roll forward to recover. Correct. Yep, so you have forward, backward, and neutral. But if you're on the ground, you cannot go forward anymore. Yeah, so you can also delay it by not holding a button as well. But if you delay it, you risk getting comboed extra hits. Yeah, whoops. Okay, here's instant recovery. This is ground recovery, and if you wait really, really long... Oh, not, not long enough. Not long enough. There we go. <laughs> you get a different type. Forward area recovery is often used to escape being shoved into a corner. Yep. It moves the slammer to the ground so they can't roll forward, yeah. Most combos you're gonna learn should end with a hard knockdown so they can't forward roll, like out of the corner. Generally dash or backstep to adjust your positioning so that your opponent can't roll over your head as they recover. Roll over your head. <laughs> oh, after finishing an, an, an aerial combo. Okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, oh, Kizeme. Which literally just means, like, offense. But in the case of fighting games, it refers to specifically offense as the opponent is recovering from being hit. Um... Covers and recovery. Shut the your attack will land. Yeah, meaties. Because you just ended the combo, you're plus a billion, and so you can start your attacks first. What? I was too early. I think. Also, when you wake up, you're completely invincible to throws. Um. As opposed to being gold thrown, like you would after head stun and block stun. Okizeme. Wow, what a what a what a challenge. Success. Every move as soon as you recover from the attack is called a reversal. Any attacks. You make after guarding on wake up or after a recovery roll. Or consider it re uh, reversals. If you're in, if you use an invulnerable attack as a reversal, you'll beat your opponent's attempts at Okisime. Yep. And the window is like very, it's very large. Yep. A huge window. That was too slow. <laughs> Performing reversals is very easy. Yeah, you can also reversal backstab. Success. She's just vulnerable to start a veil off. You can also use it as a reversal. Success. We can maybe jump in and attempt to break. If you jump in and attempt an attack while low to the ground, you have a chance to land and guard. Uh, this is a safe jump. They call it safe jump in this game. They didn't call it safe jump in the previous game. And they they did a different safe jump setup <laughs> that actually freaking works. <laughs> you have to manually time the other one. Uh, any problem with the chain shift with cancelable attack is they get up and then chain shift to cancel it, which we haven't even mentioned. Chain, chain shift is, a, is like instinct from Killer Instinct. You just press the button and it, and you, like, recover instantly, but the screen freezes so you can see what happens. <clears throat> yeah, you'll be invulnerable. Wait, wait, what? Go back to the- I didn't do the right move. There we go, 
So I can do like a meaty projectile and then CC or CS cancel it. <laughs> CC cancel it. Wrong game. CS cancel it and it works. Try to attack your opponent as they wake up and they backstep. Your attack will miss because they're invincible. But backsteps don't have that much invincibility, so you can actually do like a long reaching attack. And it'll actually reach. Hey, what? Oh, I had to do a combo. Like that. Chain shifts, chain shifts include a time freezing effect, which allows you to scope out your opponent's Okizeme. If you use one on wake up, take advantage of this effect and nail the reversal with an invincible attack. Yep, takes more than sheer will willpower to save yourself from Okizeme. Time for you to see what your opponent has. Yeah, basically what it amounts to is if they're doing anything, you DP. If they're not doing anything, you fail, but you're still safe. Oops. Oh, I didn't get the CC. When you meet certain conditions, you're under Vorpal. So while you're in Vorpal, you deal 10% increased damage. Um, but also, you look at the gauge at the bottom. Yeah, so there's a big circle. Uh, and when that circle goes all the way around, it's like once every thir like 13 seconds or something. Uh, the player with more grid will get Vorpal until the next cycle or until they use it, <laughs> basically. Um, should we fill three diamonds? So you can see how it manage. Okay, it's 14 seconds. Looking at walking, so yeah, in general, forward movement will increase it. Backward movement will, well, here, I'll, I'll just read it. I'll read my notes. Um, okay. So first of all, it generates naturally over time for both players. Uh, <clears throat> also, I didn't test this, but I read somewhere that the rate at which you build grid passively is related to the distance between your, you and the wall behind you. So if you're cornered, you build less grid, but I didn't test that to make sure that was the case. Um, I know there are several things that will build you grid and anything that builds you grid will also remove a smaller portion of grid from the opponent's side so that's like a constant tug of war hi puppy you're okay buck uh getting vorpal is like a constant tug of war and whoever is ahead in the tug of war every 14 seconds uh, you'll get Vorpal status, and Vorpal is very important. Hello, Heal Meal Bun. Uh, yes, this is a new game. It came out uh, two hours ago. This is Undernight in Birth 2. It's very similar to the previous version, but with more mechanics, more characters, rollback netcode. Um, the tutorial has had improvements. It's still not perfect. I'm still going through it, but it has improvements. No puppy. No. Um, yeah. Ah, Swordson's here too. How you doing? How you doing, puppy? How you doing, chat? How you doing, puppy? All right, so let's go over all the things that build you gr No, puppy. No. 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 Uh, so yeah, anytime you build grid, the opponent loses grid, so it's a, it's a tug of war. Uh, but the amount, the amount they lose is less than what you build. So in general, um, you'll, you'll end up net positive overall. And uh, the gauge at the bottom will end up encroaching on, on the middle. Ah. So here are the things that build you a uh, grid. Moving forward, that includes walking and dashing and teching and assaulting. 
It was all build grid. Um, you can use concentration, which we'll get to later. You can shield. Uh, shield, shielding attacks build you chunks of grid. I mean, just blocking attacks will build you grid. Although, if you're already in Vorpal state, blocking attacks removes grid instead of building it. Uh, not the same for shield. Um, you also can use green shields, which I haven't talked about green shields yet. But we'll we'll get there. Um, missing a green shield actually takes a chunk of meter or of, of grid away from you. Um, the new mechanic, Creeping Edge, is the same way. If you successfully dodge an attack using cre uh, Creeping Edge, you'll build grid. And if you don't, then you'll lose grid. Um, uh, shielding attacks builds grid. If, if you tech the opponent's throw, you'll build grid. If you perform Veil Off, you'll get one, one small chunk of grid. Just for doing it. Um, and assaults build you grid. And you lose grid if you whiff a throw, or you get hit, or you tech backwards from from your combo, or if you perform a force function, which we'll get to force functions in a bit. That's one way that you can spend your grid to get new moves. Uh, also, if you miss your green shield, you'll lose grid. If you miss your creeping edge, you'll lose grid. If your attack gets shielded, you also lose grid. And if your throw gets teched, you lose grid. And if you get thrown, you lose grid. Um, also, if you get more than half the gauge, so like more than your half of the gauge, it is possible to keep going past the six grid point. Uh, and there are benefits to doing that, such as Celestial Vorpal, which I'll get there. Um, but if you're at that point, you start like draining, like it's it starts uh, pushing you back toward your side. So you'll lose grid over time if you have more than six. <clears throat> but, it, but if you have more than six, you're guaranteed to be ahead of the opponent. So it's fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, also, there's a system where if the opponent does like a really, really long combo, you just get grid. <laughs> you get some pity grid because the opponent combo you. Uh, yeah. Oh, also, your grid resets between rounds, so be sure to use that if you're going to win the round. Uh, specifically, if you have chain shift, you should use your chain shift because the chain shift will give you EXS meter, and EXS meter does not reset between rounds, so you should get that out of the way. Um, but yeah. Uh, is Enkidu an easy character for beginners? No character in this game is easy for beginners. <laughs> uh, I mean... Let me think about that. You shouldn't a character in this game because you think the game is hard and you want to make the game easier because that's not going to work <clears throat> so i would say i'll just here i'll go to the i'll go to the character select is there a mission mode yes I have the deluxe edition though. Why is he not? Oh, also, uh, there there is no random select like icon, but if you just scroll off the side, you get random select. It's kind of weird. Why is he not unlock? I guess you had to unlock him with like story mode or something. Um, if you're looking, okay, so this game's combos. Uh, there are some characters, like, okay, Yuzuriha's combos are hard, Seth's combos are hard, Kyle's combos are hard. Um, there's probably more, like, I, I would say Hilda's are hard just because you have to know the spacing. Um, Linnae's can be hard because they're kind of fast. If you have slow hands, you know, they might, they, might, they, might, uh, they might be hard, but every character in the game 
you can choose to do harder combos for more damage. Uh, but most of the difficulty of this game is not is not related to execution. Kuan is an early purchase bonus. I did early purchase before the game came out. Also, early purchase extends until March 31st, and it's uh, still day one. It's not March. It's not March 31st yet. Also, I have the deluxe edition. Let me check Steam. <laughs> That's not Steam. And will be installed with the game. Okay. Let me restart the game and see if that works. Uh, restart. Hey, phew, excuse me. I'm allergic to turning off the game. By the way, this game does not have borderless full screen, so I use windowed mode. Um, and borderless gaming, app, uh, the app called Borderless Gaming, which is free if you get it from their website, or you can get it on Steam for not free. Okay, I, okay. It was just I... <laughs> I started the game too quickly. The game didn't realize I had the, the deluxe edition, so there we go. Cool. Um, what was I saying? Okay, so most of the difficulty of this game is in its complexity, not its execution. And so in that sense, it doesn't matter what character you pick. Every character is going to be, like... Playing characters will be of various complexity, but playing against characters, which is much more important, is you're going to have to play against all characters. So I would say pick the character you think looks the coolest. And I don't mean their portrait. Like, oh, this character looks the coolest for obvious reasons. Uh, but watch them play and see if they... Uh, appeal to you. Do do their trials, do their uh, missions, watch high level players play it. And if you if if there's a character that sticks out to you, pick them. You'll never guess who that character is for me. Cause it's very abnormal. Uh, so yeah, pick pick a character you want to play and stick with them. And then learn the game. Learn the game first. Learn the systems. Uh, most of it will be in the tutorial mode, but a lot of it's not. Okay, let me scan for high counters. Get all these. Yeah, high counters not even on here, so the tutorial is not complete. Um, but it's. It's pretty good. It's very bloated, though. There's a lot of stuff in there that doesn't need to be in there. Uh, but yeah. Um, it, which characters you find difficult will be different for every player. And yeah, they they up uh, so the the color editor they just copy pasted basically from their previous game, Melty Blood Type Lumina, which is good. Uh, the answer to your question is yes, Thorin. <laughs> yes. Uh, n nothing in character specifics yet. But I think I have all of the systems. I'm trying to think of this something I d didn't add yet. Anyway. When you meet certain conditions, you'll enter Vorpool. Vorpool is very important. You'll need a very full grid gauge. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So, that circle at the bottom will cycle around every 14 seconds although it pauses during like hit stun and stuff I think or not hit stun but hit stop so it'll take about 14 seconds maybe more ow to cycle around but every every few seconds every 14 seconds 
uh, the the player with more grid will get Vorpal. And so Vorpal gives you... Here, I'll forward dash to build meter. So that's halfway. And somewhere somewhere around this point, when it's like three quarters of the way full, there's a, there's only a few seconds left. You, you, you'll need to be like conscious of Vorpal. Like, I, I need to get Vorpal. Um, it's not the first thing you should learn in the game, but it's one of the earliest things that you should learn in the game is how do I how do I maximize my chances of getting Vorpal? The, the main reason you want Vorpal is because of Chain Shift, which I'm sure it will show us very soon. If you build the Greed Gauge, you won't enter Vorpal. If, the, if, it, if it isn't more full than your opponents. Build up your Greed Gauge. And, yeah. Here, I'll use this. Mm. Success. Success. Yeah, if you hold 5D, that's concentration. Um, it'll build a uh, grid very quickly. And then after a couple of seconds, it'll start to additionally build more, but and in exchange, it'll drain your, your EXS meter. I'm just going to call it EX meter. Your EX meter will get drained, but you'll build even more grid. And yes, you can build grid into your opponent's half. And it is possible to collide <laughs> and force the opponent's gauge back down. Force function, here we go. Uh, this is one of the main ways to consume your grid meter. Um, so th th things like this are powerful, but you should use them early on in the, in the cycle so that you st still have a chance to get Vorpal when the cycle finishes. Uh, but Force Functions consumes a stock of grid, and what it does is very unique to the character. <laughs> uh, also, if, if you have Vorpal, the cost is halved. Uh, in his case, it's a strike, and if you charge it, it's an overhead that's plus on block. Um, also, in this game, they added a bunch of them. So, for example, I can do this. This is down plus force function. And I get like a high priority projectile. This projectile hits twice. So it'll blow through regular projectiles that hit only one time. Uh, next. There's a grid break if you get thrown or take damage while using shield. So if you high shield and they do a low attack, or if you low shield and they do an overhead attack, or if you shield at all and they throw you because throws can't be shielded, you'll get grid broken. And that sets your grid to zero for several seconds. Uh, the exact duration depends on which move grid broke you. Uh, so if, if if you get hit by like a 2A while you're stand shielding, you're not gonna get, your, uh, get grid broken for very long. Uh, but while you're grid broken, your grid is stuck at zero. It's just stuck. It's frozen at zero, and you cannot perform assault or shield. Um, yep, yeah. like that grid break, and you can see the effect in the bottom. It like it's like shattered. Um, there are ways to regenerate quickly from getting grid broken. Um, if if you block attacks, the remaining duration gets reduced, so you'll re uh, recover sooner. Uh, but also you can use like veil off and stuff like that. Uh, Celestial Vorpal. Okay, if you act, if if you get Vorpal, because you have over half of the meter. So if you have six, if if you have more than six stocks of grid, when the cycle finishes, you will get Celestial Vorpal, um, which is a more powerful version of Vorpal in a couple of ways. Um. Yep, you're, it doesn't say how much here. I actually don't know how much it is, but the original is plus 10%. I'm going to guess this is plus 20% damage. That's a guess. I, 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 that's a guess. Uh, also, your chain shift builds more meter. We'll get there. Um, and you get you, you get even more grid gauge just from activating Celestial. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, I think there's something else. I forget what it is, though. Uh, blocking attacks will reduce the duration of a grip break. I mentioned that. Otherwise, however, it, yeah, it takes a long time. Yep, yeah, I mentioned that. During Vorp Bolt, you can use Chain Shift. Uh, you'll need to build up your EX gauge with Chain Shift to use EX specials and infinite worth, so, uh, which both deal very high damage. Yeah, so Grid is like a utility meter, and EX is like a damage meter, basically. But, but you, there, there are some characters who get utility from the EX as well. Like, like some characters don't have DPs, but they have supers, and their supers are DPs. Um, things like that. Or, or like a plus on block super or something. But grid is... The grid gauge is almost entirely utility. Unless you include, like, the damage buff of, go, of going warble. Uh, change has, has a, a lot of uses. It has all of the uses. <laughs> like interrupting your opponent's attacks, reducing the uh, recovery time, and increasing the damage of your combos. It's important for you to be able to use chain shift, but it is equally important that your opponent cannot. Yes, very important that you know how the grid gauge is as the cycle is about to finish. You're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta get some more grid. Maybe I'll drop my combo right now and start concentrating, you know, with with five D to build more grid so that I get this cycle because. The cycle's gonna end during my combo, and I don't want that. So I'm currently behind on 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 uh, grid. Uh, activate chain shift fails your ex gauge very quickly. Yes. Yeah, so when you activate chain shift, by default, <laughs> um, it drains all your grid, and then it, and it converts it into ex meter. Um, up to like a bar and a and a fifth, I think. I, 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 I think it's 120, 120 meter. Um, if you have s six stocks, um, if you have celestial warp bullets increased, so you'll get more meter. Also, I think you keep your grid. I might be wrong about that. I I again, this game this came out two two hours and twenty four minutes ago, so I don't know how it works exactly. We'll we'll figure it out later. Um, but the main, the main use of Chain Shift is you can cancel into it from basically anything, and it's a, it's a one frame activation with no vulnerability at all. So, it's like Instinct from Killer Instinct, where you just kind of do it, and, the, and like, the game freezes for a minute. Not, not a minute, but like a second. It, it's like half a second in this game. But it, it gives you time to react to what's happening. So the opponent can't do anything. Because if the opponent does anything, and you happen to chain shift at the same time, you'll see they're doing something and just DP them. So, yeah. Uh, but but you you only get one chain shift per cycle. So it's very important that you get chain shift. And it's very powerful when, when you use it, but you only get to use it once. Um, so a, a very large part of, the, of this game, at like intermediate levels I would say, is knowing how to get and maintain Vorpal. Knowing how to get Vorpal, and then maybe like halfway through the cycle you, you use Chain Shift, and you, you use that to guarantee yourself the next Vorpal. That's usually how it goes. Um, obviously there's a lot of depth there that you can explore, uh, and it's not going to end up that way every time, but that is sort of what you're thinking of throughout the match. And that's sort of where I was when I stopped playing Unist. I didn't play Uniclear at all, I only played Unist. And I played quite a bit, but then got sick of the online. <laughs> In order to enter the Vorpal state, you'd have four grid gauge, we already said that. Yeah, when the gauge is about 60 to 70% through its cycle, actions that heavily impact the grid gauges, shields, throws, throw breaks, concentration become critical to your game. Yeah, so so you might if you're behind on grid and the cycle is about to complete, you should play more grid aggressive. Like, you, like, like, you should be more risky. You should go for more throws if you think they're gonna block. You should block more if you think, or or shield more if you think if you think they're going to attack you with strikes, or if you think they're gonna like sit at full screen, you then use then uh, use your concentration. But if you both concentrate, then obviously you're just gonna stay the same. So you, you'll need to go in if you're behind. If, if you're ahead in grid, as the cycle goes, or is about to go, then you can sort of play it safe. Uh, you're 
your dream scenario is your full screen with both characters uh, using concentration. But uh, yeah, you can uh, maybe don't go for a risk because if you go for a throw and they break it, you just lost Vorpal. If, if, if you go for a shield and they grid break you, you just lost Vorpal. Uh, if you, yeah, like basically you're playing less grid aggressive. Like you're 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 more safe with your grid meter, in that you're re removing chances for the opponent to build grid, and you're in and you're reducing chances for yourself to lose grid. Uh, the main way to do that is to block, because blocking generates you grid. But if you only block, they're going to stay at full screen and concentrate. So. You've said that like seven times. Of course, if your grid is lower, you should use shield more aggressively. Try activating it preemptively to catch your opponent's stray attacks or using it against projectiles or guard lock. Yeah, there's almost no reason to not shield projectiles in this game. It hasn't talked about green shield yet either. There's a lot of mechanics that it hasn't even talked about yet. Taking damage while using shield will cause grid break, which is instant warpal loss, obviously, because you have your your grid set to zero. Success. Uh, so yeah, uh, if if you think your your opponent is gonna like low shield, do an assault because they're locked into that low shield for a long time. So you just do assault, jump C, grid break, full combo, free warpal. Yeah, it's it's bad. But they have to if they think they're if 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 they're behind in grid they they might have to. Uh, so it's become high risk, high reward. Yeah, it's like t it's like plus two and minus two if you if you throw break, <laughs> I think. Like a huge shift. Like if if you if if you get your throw broken before Vorpal, it's like over. <laughs> uh, if you don't have the grid advantage, just don't just go for throws. Try to bait your opponent's throw bricks with moves like Assault. Yeah. Assault's a very good option if you're ahead in grid. But then they might stay and shield it. It's like the worst they can do. Yeah, Concentration if you're about to lose. E even if you're in the middle of a combo. Like, I mean, okay. The way I think of it is that it's like about 10%. About 10% of their life bar. So, so, something like that. If, if completing the combo will deal at least 10% of their life bar, it's worth it to, to, to do the combo and lose Vorpal. If the rest of your combo is not that much, then it's better to go for Vorpal. Um, that's like a strict like black and white. Like If I don't drop the combo, I will not get Vorpal. And if I do drop the combo, I will get Vorpal. Then the value is like about 10% of the life bar. That's what I would say. That's my opinion. That's definitely not objective. Yep. Great advantage though, you can rush in toward your opponents so you don't have a chance to concentrate. You'll already also be ready to hit them during its recovery if they do. Yep. Alright, shield finally. Talking about shield. Hold down D to shield. Well it's what it's wall blocking, so it's four D or one D. It's just relatively easy to use a projectile, try it yourself. Uh, uh, also, I can hold it down. Uh, same with concentrate. I, I I I can hold the button down, and it'll just automatically like every frame check to see if I'm shielding or not. Um, air is looking at me guarding against jump attack. So you, so you can shield air to airs, but you cannot shield anti airs. That's not how you shield. I wish the UI was behind the character, it's not in front of them. She does an uh, anti-air maneuver. Yeah, okay, so here's important. Important. If they do a jump attack and you shield it, you get a punish. You get a punish. If you anti-air with shield, they cannot cancel that attack. I think they can chain shift, but I might not be correct. Um, but they can't like cancel it into specials or chain it into another move and their landing recovery is increased 
and your recovery is reduced. So you're going to get a punish. Like that. You're going to get a punish. From guard shield. Okay, yeah, okay. So, so, um, if you're in block stun, this is like red parry, I guess, from third strike, or Yadagarasu. Um, if you press sh shield while in block stun, you'll get like a green bubble, and it's it's the same as regular shield, but it doesn't affect your frame data anymore. Um, and if it fails you lose grid. So normal shield, you only gain grid if it works and you, and like nothing happens if it doesn't work. Um, with green shield, if you fail it, you lose, you, you lose grid. Um, other than that, it's like the same. Oh, also if you green shield, you can like wiggle between high and low shield. Uh, in, instead of being locked into one or the other. Um, also, it actually it, it actually ex extends your block stun, uh, which is kind of good and bad. <laughs> this game oozes style. It is certainly a style. <laughs> I'll word it that way. Um, I like I like the blades. Uh, in the like the bottom left, you see his his sword. Because those aren't, like, drawn most of the time. They're, like, 3D models that they drew over, I think. I didn't make the game, so I don't know. But those look fine because they're, like, rigid. and They don't, like, move. <laughs> but anything that, that, like, rotates and moves in the game is hand-drawn. It, it, it doesn't look very good. Also, everyone's freaking skinny as crap. Or stupidly buff. Or Waldstein. Um, guard Shield. Yep, there's the green bubble. Green bubble. Guard Shield, resetting your pressure and going for a throw. Yeah, so if you, you, if you get thrown out of Guard Shield, you're freaking doomed. <laughs> Basically. Uh, if your opponent repeatedly succeeds at using Guard Shield, the grid gauge will greatly increase. It's important to keep them guessing when it comes to your attack sequences. Uh, if you can break Sudagar with a throw, you'll put them in grid in grid break state and they just lose the whole match. <laughs> not not really. Um let's see. I think it will make you too predictable. Yep. Choose your opponent's guard shield, make it longer for them to be able to act again. Yeah. So because green shield extends your block stun. It makes it easier for you to su successfully shield more strikes, but if they don't go for a strike, it's also easier for them to punish you with a throw and, and get a and get a grid break. So yeah. Uh, use moves like crouching A or block string, then throw them to put them in grid break. Yeah. Like obviously. Low A run up throw is not a true block string, but because he did green shield, it extended it extended his block stun, and, and I could throw him and, 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 uh, and get a grid break. Uh, Vorpal, yeah, this is chain shifts. Always try, always try to use it during Vorpal. Uh, that's debatable, but 90, 95 percent of the time, you're you're gonna want to use chain shift. Spends your grid gauge to fill your EX gauge. Yep. It actually gives you the values this time. Um, I believe there's a limit on this. If you have more than six, like say you have like eight stocks of grid, it only gives you six. It, it, it only converts six of them, I think, unless they changed it. We'll put you in permanent verbal state. So you can, uh, okay, uh, yeah, it's a training mode thing. Yeah, chain shift, very powerful. Canceling the recovery of normal and specials. Also use it, to, uh, but you, you you can't do it for invincible. Uh, yeah, note that some moves like invulnerable attacks cannot be canceled with chain shift. Yeah, so your DPS and supers are not cancelable with chain shift. Uh, by canceling out of attacks with chain shift, you can reduce the recovery. Yeah, it's 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 a Roman cancel, but it's better than it's 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 like the old Roman cancel. It's it's better than than the new Roman cancel. Uh, please note that you cannot use chain shift to cancel a blocked 
invulnerable attack. The downside of chain shift is that they don't fill your EX gate. Yeah, so it, it, if if you cancel into chain shift, uh, depending on how you cancel it, it'll 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 give you about half as much EX meter. It depends on if the if it's blocked or not, basically. Um, yeah, but the, you usually don't care about that. Try making the opponent block one of your heavy attacks, then use chain shift to cancel. I don't know why the input is DD. Uh, they should probably change that to be like. I would like I would I would like BD, B B B plus D, not double tap D. I think is a better input. So some specials can be chain shift canceled, even when they whiff. Yes, correct. Um. You can chain shift almost whenever you want. Almost. If you hold D, uh, down and repeatedly tap D, yeah, okay, so this is a very basic um, option select. If you're in block stun and, and you mash, you, you just mash uh, chain shift, you'll chain shift as, as soon as possible and you'll probably get a free DP. Or you use, but it must be down because down back or back will perform guard shield instead. Uh, no. Not exactly. Ki kind of. I'll, I'll say yes for the purposes of this example. <laughs> yes. And yes, this game has an input buffer. Oops, I didn't block. Um, also, this game handles motion inputs different from most games. In in most games, it's like you have this number of frames to do the move from start to finish. Uh, in this game, it's each step has a small amount of time where you can do the move, and I don't like that. They should change it. Um, but yeah, so like for quarter circles, uh, I didn't test in this game yet, but in in Uniclear, it's seven frames. You're allowed to, uh, so you're you're allowed to hold down for as, as long as you want, and then you 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 can go to down forward. But within seven frames of going down forward, you have to press forward, and then within seven frames of of, of pressing forward, you you have to press like a the the button you want, and then and, and then and then you'll get the move. If you wait any of those steps longer than eight frames, it'll fail. Uh, and that's true for every quarter circle in the game. For other uh, motions, it's, it's, it's different, but... If you have more than six diamonds in your gauge, chain shift will reset the... Yeah, so if you get... Okay. If you chain shift while you have more than six grid, it'll reset your jump cancel and wall bounce slash ground bounce juggle limits. Uh, so this game has a lot of things that you can just kind of do at the end of the round to extend your combo but then after the combo ends you're like kind of doomed so you should only do it if you're gonna win <laughs> uh by doing it and chain shift is one of those things although you're not kind of you're not doomed if you do cha if you do chain shift it's mainly the veil off thing but this is one of the things that you can do to like spend a resource to extend your combos and get a bunch of damage Yep, but usually you want to save chain shift for not combos because it's so valuable as a as a screen freeze. Yep, Vorpal does not carry over into the next round, so you'll be passing up a chance to boost your EX gauge if you, if you beat. Okay, yeah. Okay. So what this means is, if you're in a combo and you're about to kill the opponent uh, and you have Vorpal, you should chain shift first uh, because if you don't chain shift, you're not going to get all that extra meter going going into the next round. Can I show a hide bread and butter combo? Mission mode. Hide. Here you go. I'll do some hide combos to take a break from the tutorial.
Oh, that's not that's not a combo. Uh, there we go. Combo. Uh, okay, don't do that one. That, that's bad. Or that one. That's closer to good. It's good enough. Oh. Um. You can combo after that one if you get it timed right. It's kind of hard. Um. Oh, here we go. I suck. There you go. Can you just buffer that? Let me try. Oh, it does. Okay. That has a lot of range. Very easy combo. I would say that's a pretty easy combo. Um, oops. Oh, wait, it's a cancel. There we go. Um, but once you get to like the expert stuff, uh, yeah. So skip like it, it, if you want real combos, skip the first two sections. So skip. Skip the beginner and intermediate and go straight to uh, advanced. These will be your like easy to do works off of everything combos for the most part. Oh, I didn't cancel. That's easy. I can, I, I can do that like five times in a row. Um, the hard part is the forward B, but it's not even that hard. That's a demo. Yeah. Easy. Um, and then once you, and then uh, it'll show you like a, a bunch of things based on, uh, like, if you start with this move, if you start with this move, if you start with an overhead. Uh, learn, learn the first one. Basically, and I that should work off of everything. It might also be this. Learn your assault combo, uh, I would say as well. Because uh, uh, your jumping normals have lower hit stun, or have more hit stun uh, scaling. Ugh. <coughs> Uh, so learn that one too, and then a as you improve with with the character, you can go. Well, there there's two ways to improve. One is to improve your execution, and if you want to improve your execution, you go down to the bottom ones because they're harder to do. If you want to improve your um, uh, improve your like knowledge base, like doing different combos based on how you start the combo. Then go for uh, the earlier ones because they'll give you a wider range of attacks that are useful or uh, combos that, that are good. Also, watch players. Watch, just watch people. Watch good players. Let's start here. Huh? Too early. Too early. There we go. Gotta run for a little bit. One hit. Oh, I don't need to do that. Uh, 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 uh. Ugh, that's a weird combo. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Mission mode for combos. Uh, also at the top of mission mode. At the very top of mission mode. Is coaching. Uh, most of this is just reading, but it's it'll give you a general sense of a character. So it, 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 if you don't know what character to play, or or if you don't know like how to uh, how to uh, start approaching a character, that'll also work. Um, take them with a grain of salt, though. This game is very open ended. You can play any character however you want, except for Hilda. 
Whoops, not player two side. Get out of there. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just 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 give me the veil off. Veil off. If you press A plus B plus C with 100% or more EX, <coughs> you'll consume your entire EX gauge. So this is, um, <coughs> it is akin to, I mean, it's like a Melty Blood feature, but I'm trying to avoid other French braid game examples. Um, okay, so it's, it's like Max Mode from KOF in that you enter a mode. <laughs> um, it is like it is like Roses Ultra 2 from Street Fighter 4 in that the more the more ultra meter she has the longer the mode lasts but you have to have at least at least half a full meter so at least 100 EX in order to actually activate it and then the duration scales with how much you have but it's not linear, I believe. <laughs> so, good luck finding that out. Um, during Veil Off, you have 20% bonus damage. Uh, also, the activation itself is a DP uh, that knocks the opponent away. You cannot cancel into it. However, you can combo into it. If you do not combo into it, Okay. It will always remove Vorpal if the opponent is in Vorpal, which is insane. Uh, also, if they, if, if if you don't combo into it, it will put them into Grid Break if they don't have Vorpal, right? So, so if if you just do it raw, not in a combo, if they have Vorpal, it'll get rid of it, and if they don't have Vorpal, it'll give them Grid Break. Um, what else? <laughs> um, it's a very slow, invincible strike. Also, you 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 uh you can hold the buttons down, and it'll delay it. Uh, but it doesn't do anything. Like there, like it's just that, that, that's all it does is, is it changes the. The timing. There's almost no reason to do it that way, though. It, it's already slow enough. <laughs> uh, also, if you are grid broken, when you activate Veil Off, you'll lose grid break, uh, and you'll also gain one grid just by doing it at, uh, every time. Veil Off, Enix, okay, no, this, uh, duh. This is normally starts empty, but this is totally we can do both sides. Four, Veil Off. Longer to last. Okay. And okay. So Veil Off is like it's kinda like max mode, but toned down. Um You get infinite supers while in Veil Off, and instead of consuming EX gauge, it consumes remaining time. So usually you get two or three. So I can uh, I can't show it off here because it's gonna end, but yeah. Yeah, you can perform actions that consume EX regardless of the amount of EX gauge. <clears throat> as long as you have a little EX, you can still perform EX special attacks and infinite worth and infinite worth EX and guard cancels. And that's it, I think. Yeah, that's it. Uh, try using EX special attack and infinite worth. Oh, okay. Yep. So I can activate, I get a super cool. Or I can activate and I get this super. And if uh, so, your EX specials consume a bit of the timer. You can get two or three usually, depending on, on how much you have. Uh, but your 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 level two super uh, costs the whole time. So even if I have a full meter and I do it instantly, it still an, it still ends. Not really. Uh, same with the other, with the other one, with the with the infinite worth EX uh, 
it ends the timer. During Veil Off, your actions consume less of your EX gauge. Yeah, so you can get more than two. EX cost of your infinite worth is not reduced. Yeah, it'll consume the entire gauge. Try to land a combo that uses EX. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing Chaos Code now. Uh, when you activate Veil Off, you'll be invulnerable. Mm -hmm. It's an unsafe on block and slow on startup invincible reversal that knocks the opponent away on hit. I missed. Vorpal and Veil Off both boost your attack power. It, yeah, it, okay, so. <clears throat> Chain Shift increases by 10% and Veil Off increases by 20%. They don't multiply, they add. So they only boost by 30%. <laughs> and also, watch the watch the left side. It says 260, and then below the, the 260, it says 200 plus 60. So it actually shows you how much damage you're getting uh, increased based on your buffs. I cancel an attack into a Veil Off activation. Yeah, okay, so... If you're in Vorpal, you can do a cancel into Veil Off, and it's called Cross Cast Veil Off. This will actually extend your combo instead of ending it, but it won't... It won't grid break the opponent or get rid of their... Well, it can't get rid of their Vorpal because you have Vorpal, but... Um, it also consumes your Vorpal. Um, and you can do it during air combo. So you, 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 uh, you can cancel your air attacks into cross cast veil off. You, you normally can't do veil off in the air, but you can if you cancel into this version. Uh, also it resets your jump cancels and ground bounce slash wall bounce limits. Um, but the duration is reduced. So you don't get as many supers. You usually get two. Like, like you, you'll do one EX move and then, and then the inf the infinite worth <clears throat> uh but yeah it, it 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 consumes all of your stuff all of it all your ex meter all your grid meter and your vorpal uh will be emptied cross cast fail off because uh, oh yeah also your if you have oh they changed that I like that actually. Why oh, no, they didn't? I'm just re I'm just re remembering wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remembered wrong. That's the same. So your <clears throat> normal super, like your half circle forward D. Uh, you can now perform it during during cross cast veil off with just a plus b plus c. Uh, you can also just do the old input if you want to. Um, but it, it, but if you're below thirty percent HP, you can also just do the other one, and it's better. Yeah, big damage. Uh, this is the other thing that really helps you. Uh, end rounds. <coughs> you can use Veil Off to get yourself out of Grid Break. Yep. Veil Off uh, removes Grid Break if you're in Grid Break, which is very, 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 very good. And if it hits the opponent, it'll Grid Break them. So, you, so basically, if you land like a reversal Veil Off, you get Vorpal for free. That's basically what it means. Oh, hey. Do it. Okay. Fail off. I'm no longer gri uh, grid broken. And I... Oh, okay. It, it builds half of the stock now. Let me change that. They nerf that. <laughs> Oop. Okay. The cost of the field will turn up the cost of Yeah, okay, so if you if you're below 30% health and you do cross cast veil off, you'll get an extra uh super. Basically. Looks like 
this. Yep. Because why not? Although you would never do that. You would do the other super. Like this. Come on. Uh, ooh. You would do the other super. Um. Oh, I don't think I mentioned this. Have we had a tutorial for that super yet? I don't think so. If you press A plus B plus C plus D, you get a super, super, super. Uh, so this costs your full super, and it's fully invincible. There's a bunch of damage, big anime cutscene. But you have to be below 30% health. Um, additionally, when you, when you use it, if you have Vorpal, you lose Vorpal. And if you don't have Vorpal, you get grid broken. Uh, so there's still incentive to use the other super because you don't get you don't lose Vorpal and get grid broken if you use the other super. But other than that, it's there's there's, there, there's no reason not to use it over the other one. Uh, so it, like if you're going to finish off the opponent in a in a combo like this, you should use the other super. You should use the the infinite worth EXS super. Uh, anyway. Come on. <laughs> Tiger kneeing is a nightmare on Leverless. <laughs> They're gonna just be below your health gauges. <laughs> wow, really? What? Wow. The first player to win two rounds. Bro. They need to rearrange this tutorial so bad. Complete all novice mentions. The timer, wow. <clears throat> oh, it usually counts down from 120. Did they, did they fix the timer? Because the timer used to start at 99, but it ticked too fast. So a 99 second round was like about 80 seconds. I wonder what they did to it. That's good advice. If you feel like you're timing out all your matches, learn better combos. <laughs> now, there is sudden death as well. But remember, it's not a real win. Yeah, tiebreaker. Alright, countdown timer will stop. Counting during screen phases and the in a, the cinematics of your supers, because <clears throat> this game's not Street Fighter Four. Uh, Tiger evolves more than simple. And imp wow. <laughs> wow! I have to learn how to do a quarter circle. This input can be a bit more challenging. Oh, by the way, this input is not like KOF 13. In KOF 13, Psyche can do his teleports by holding down and then re releasing and pressing it again and pressing down. Or at the. Or the button in this game it's actually not two five two it is five two five two so even if i hold left and then down down it still it still doesn't work right let me let me turn on my inputs here i'm gonna hold right look at that i hit down neutral down a but it, 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 it doesn't count because I didn't hit neutral before the first down. I had to go like this. That worked. Because I went because I went from back to neutral down, neutral down, A. Fun fact. <clears throat> Did they remove half circles? 
from non super from like not the super oh we didn't talk about that yet we're getting there whoops i spoiled it oh this character is stupid don't don't let me play this character oh i went too fast By the way, she doesn't have a projectile limit. She can throw more projectiles while she has projectiles on screen. <clears throat> yep, flash kick. What? I went too fast? And if you've never seen this character before, you're about to go crazy. Charge up, down plus A. Is a dive kick. They didn't show the other one. She also has charge forward, back plus attack button. Oh, they do have KOF motions. Okay. So they didn't simplify it. For some reason, they simplified uh, hides, but not sets. I guess they wanted hide to be easy. But, uh, that's, that's fine. I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. Oh, God. Uh, no, yeah, okay, this is the same. That's like KOF stuff. This is the same as KOF. Oh, and I, I don't. I can just whip it. I think that still works. It's all beginner tutorials. Certain commands take priority over others. Yep. Complete all intermediate missions. Oh, complete all missions. <laughs> There you go, that's the short, that's the short. So they didn't talk about high counters. Um, so let me go over high counters. <coughs> Training. Nice random select. Um, where's training stage? Oh, that's music. Uh, let's let's guarantee ourselves a good. A good song. Whoa! That's new. Uh, anyway, if I make him, oh wait, I've I've buttons now. They added buttons. Uh, <clears throat> so normally, if you hit the opponent during the startup of their move, it's a counter hit, and you get a little bit of extra hits done. If I counter hit you out of a special move, come on, play it. Hold it down. Oh, I went too fast. I don't know what happened. Okay, good. If I counter hit you out of a special move... Oh, not, not that one. Try that one. Nope, too slow. Nope. Did they remove high counters? Hmm. Where's character? Oh, they wow. They actually made a real pause menu. Holy mo in the previous game it was Every single training option was in one giant list. Holy moly. Let me make one I know works. Noise. 
Hmm. They removed high counters, I think. Huh. Well, time to delete that section from my notes. Uh, high counter. But you can still do it during the recovery. <laughs> Come on. Mm. So certain attacks, including invincible attacks, can be counter hit during the recovery as well. There used to be a system called high counter, where if you if you if you hit the opponent during the animation at all, it was a high counter, and you got even more frame advantage than normal. But in this game, it appears they've gotten rid of that. And yes, this game does have good music. <laughs> this is Lina's theme. Nightwalker. Uh, I'll do <coughs> the infamous Byakuya theme. Uh, cool. So high counters are just gone. Uh, uh, we, did, oh, we did talk about creeping edge. Okay, what did we not talk about? Let me go... Let me just go through my notes real fast. Okay. What are we not talking about? <coughs> Stop making noise. I think we touched on everything. It took three freaking hours, but we touched on everything. Mm. And all that. So now I can start talking about more specifics. <laughs> Uh, I'll mention every character has different health. Um, like this character I'm playing now is... Okay, so the lowest health is 9,500 on Seth. And everyone else has above 10,000. So with Waldstein being the highest at 11,500. So it's quite a small difference. Like the, hold on, let me do the math. 9,500 divided by 11,500. Um, the lowest health character has 83% the health of the highest health character. Compare that to freaking Street Fighter 4. Oh, I don't even remember. I, th I think it's 65% if you do it with Street Fighter 4. So the character health differences are smaller in, in this game, but they, but they do still uh, exist. Also, I don't know if they changed health from the previous game or if they... Or like, if if the if the new three characters have different extremes of health, I would not be surprised. Um, yeah, dash speeds are all different. Uh, some characters have unique dashes. Like this is the default dash, uh, but some characters have different dashes. Like Akatsuki has like a step dash, like a Street Fighter character. <coughs> Um, back dashes are invincible, um, but the amount of invincibility you have is different for every character. But again, it's very, they're all very similar. 
Um, characters with really slow backdashes naturally have to have more in, uh, invincibility on them. Uh, Pre-jump is also not universal. Um, we talked about that. Okay, it's, it's apparently 8 frames. Uh, if, if you block an attack or... Mm, I should, this is not correct. It, okay, it is correct. Okay, after you, okay. After you Ukemi, you are invincible to throws for eight additional frames. This means that any eight frames start up, well, it means that any, yeah, eight frames start up or faster attack will straight up beat their throw attempt every time regardless of how they time it. The same applies after <clears throat> uh, grounded, hit stun, walk stun, except the throw will... Um, <coughs> will connect and have double the tech window making it reactable. However, if you are thrown out of an attack or shield, it cannot be broken. Broken. So, tick throws work kind of. <laughs> they work kind of. But if you go for a tick throw and they don't do an attack, they can break it on reaction. <clears throat> That's how that works. <clears throat> or you can wait out those eight frames and then throw them, and then they can't break it on reaction, but you've opened yourself up to any attack that's eight frames or faster. Um, Karas? Karas exist. So, in this game, they did Karas correctly. <laughs> Um, you are allowed to cancel the first frame of anything, for the most part. The first three frames, actually. You can cancel the first three, two, two frame. For, you, you can get, okay, this is hard to explain. You're allowed to press one button, hold it for two frames, and then press another button on the third frame, and it'll... Whatever you started doing first, it'll it'll cancel it and do the action that, are, that would require both buttons. For example, this is B plus C. If I don't press the buttons at the same time, I still get B plus C. Now, technically, like, like as soon as I press C, the game's going to start my 5C move. Uh, there's no way for it to know that I wanted to do that move, right? So, so I'm going to get one frame of this move. And then it's going to cancel into the flame move, which is B plus C. And in this game, there's a, one more frame of leniency. See, that that was a three, it didn't work. But, but two does work. One works and two works, but three does not work. Um, and they did it correctly because, one, you can only Kara into things that require more than one button press. Um, in... In Street Fighter 4, for example, you could do quarter circle forward, medium kick, me, uh, like medium kick light punch with Ken, and you would get forward medium kick into fireball, which would extend the range of his uh, uh, um, of his fireball. That, that does not work because you can only Kara into things that naturally require more than one button press. So I can Kara into, into, into a forward dash or a backdash if, if I wanted to. Um, and I can Kara into my force function. I can Kara into uh, throws. I can Kara into veil off. I can Kara into um, I actually can't Kara into that, but uh, yeah, you, you can do Karas, and there are uses for this, especially with throws. 
because because throw uses D. So if I do this, let me, let me pick a different character. Hmm. If I hold down back and I Kara D into A, I'll get a excuse me, I'll get a crouching shield Kara into throw. And shields are active on frame one, so uh, if they attack me, I'll get a shield. If they throw me, I'll take it. If they do nothing, I'll throw them. Uh, that is on the surface what it appears like, although it's not perfect because you're only shielding for up to two frames. So if they don't attack you within those two frames, like during the startup of your throw, then you're, they're not gonna, you know, it's you're, you're gonna get counter it. Also, if, if they throw you during your shield, you're not gonna be able to throw tech. <laughs> you're gonna get grid broken because you got thrown out of a shield. So it's not foolproof, but it's a nice little tech that, that, you, that you can do. It, it also exists in uh, Type Lumina. Um, yeah, there are several things <clears throat> that you can do with Karas. Although I, I will say, they went above and beyond, and they prevented you from Karaing more than once. Um, for example, I can Kara Stan C into Force Function. I can also Kara. There we go. Oh, oh I'm, I'm in Vela. Uh, nope. There we go. I can also Kara Force Function into Veloff. I can also Kara. Ve oh, I don't have life, or I have too much life, rather. Um, I can also Kara Veloff into Infinite Worth EXS. Right. So I'm 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 Karaing from C to C plus B, to C plus B plus A, to C plus B plus A plus D, right? But I can't stack those. Um, I can only stack the, the Kara for the two frames that is intended. See there? I held C for two frames, and on the third frame, I hit B. So 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 I got the B plus C. But then on frame four, I hit A, but that's, but that's too late. If I hit A on frame four, uh, I'm not going to get the veil off, right? So you you can't stack Kara's m more than their intended duration. Uh, most games don't do that, but this game does, which is nice. <clears throat> ah, let's look at cross-up protection, shall we? What's a good cross-up? Um, whoops, that's not a button. Like that. Or let's do it like this. Not like that. I need to change these buttons, holy moly. That's horrible. There we go. Really nice, tight cross-up, right? Uh, there's a few things I can show here. Whoops. First of all, I can hold toward my opponent. Right, so here, I'm gonna hold, uh, left. Oh, I'm gonna hold left. Oh, Oops, I text. God, this is hard. Yeah, let's do it like this. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on the, on the left side. He's gonna do this, and I'm gonna hold left. 
I hold left, I block. Right? Same situation. I hold right, I block. So there's a huge cross-up protection window where you, where you can block both ways. But not only this, but the game has KOF-style inputs. Where, which is to say, you don't have to auto-correct. There is no auto-correction in this game. Um, for example, it, like, like, let's say... Let's say I jump at you in Street Fighter, and you want to Shoryuken punish. Uh, you want to use a Shoryuken as an anti-air. As soon as I cross over your head, you want to do, do the Shoryuken. That's pretty hard. Why? Because you have to press left while I'm on the left side, and that's forward, and then down, and then after I cross over your head, it'll be down and right to finish the motion. Because you, you, you gotta go forward, down, down forward, but you switch sides in in between the motion parts, so you're actually doing kind of like a half circle, <laughs> basically to do a shoryuken. Uh, this game does not do that. This game does not remember your inputs as forward and back. It remembers them as left and right, which means that I can press right. Uh, pretend I'm the hide player. I I, I can press right while she's still on the left side and then down and then she crosses over and then i press down and right and it'll still give me the move so <laughs> let me shut that off right Right, so he's doing a cross-up. Normally this would be pretty hard to anti-air. But I can do it very easily by doing the motion early. Oh, I did it too early. Um, or rather, what matters is that you press the button after they cross your head. That's all that matters. When you do the directions, it does not matter. When you press the button, it does matter. Very easy. Very easy. Uh, also, there are no input shortcuts. I can't do this. Um, I can't do this. Forward, down, forward. It's not a shuriken. You need to hit the death. You, you need to go forward, down, down, forward. Like that. Um... Half circles, they changed, apparently. I'll look into that later. All right. So there's a, there kind of is a priority system, um, well, only with strikes and throws. Oh, also, I didn't mention this. You cannot counter hit with an A attack, with a light normal. So let me turn on counter hit. Oh, they changed it. Cool. Remove that. Cool, cool, cool. Good to know. All right, we can talk about input tricks. Yeah, so, okay. So there's... Because of the input priority system, you can do a lot of stuff with throw techs. 
um, because after because you throw tech after you were thrown, if that makes sense. So that means that if I press a button while I'm being thrown, I can still wait 14 frames and press A plus D and it'll still work. So things like this are powerful because I can I can do one thing, commit to that thing, and then if they threw me before I committed to that thing, I can tech it, right? So basically, almost any action you ever do ever, you can buffer with a throw and you might tech a throw. But you also have to be wary because you might get TRM'd, so. Um, one of the most useful things that you can do is you can dash. So I can dash. I can also dash with A plus B plus D. And that will also tech throws if I'm currently being thrown. Um, Um, let's see. <clears throat> and you can experiment with various combinations to figure out, like, how, how do I perform this move while also being safe to throws, right? The one they showed in the, in the, in the tutorial was the anti-air, as well as, um, this. Um, you can also do... <laughs> Crouching B. <clears throat> Crouching C. Um... Yeah. <gasps> um, standing normals are harder because you're just gonna get a throw. Although it is possible to get a dash throw, right? If you press forward plus dash plus D, you'll get a forward, like like a slightly more range on your throw. Um, but you can even do it off of your normals if you delay it so that you don't Kara. Because... Interesting. Apparently you can't Kara stand. Okay, interesting. So they've okay, they've put more limitations on this. <clears throat> interesting. So, you can only Kara into things that require multiple button presses. You can Kara from almost anything. Additionally, you can only Kara from things that use one of the buttons in the second action. So, for example, you cannot Kara 5C into 5AD, which is your throw, because 5AD does not contain the C button. Whew. <clears throat> see ah now we have to talk about chain shift chain shift does everything for you man uh man so okay
Okay, they removed that. Thank God. Give me Vorpal. Okay. Okay, they removed the God OS. Thank God. Okay. You used to be able to hold crouch block and then double tap throw. Um, and that would tech throws if you were thrown, or it would perform, it, if, if you got hit with an attack, it would shield it, or if nothing happened, you would chain shift, which is absurd. And the only way to beat it would be to like throw the opponent during that two frame window where they're shielding. Wow, throws take priority. Throws take priority over specials now. Oh no. Oh, I'm going too early. Oh. Forward dashing takes priority over specials. Interesting. Where's input priority? That is crazy. That is weird. They did some weird stuff to get rid of all those option selects. A lot of option selects don't work anymore. Um, but I, you, you, you can still do it. Just not as fast. Because you have to delay it by like two frames to avoid the Kara cancel. Wow. Wow, you can't just straight up can't do it. That was frame perfect. I, I, I did one and one, and it was still, yeah. Just straight up, you can't do it. Wow. It's gone. Crazy. Wow. Well, gotta remove that one from my list. Wow. This game has got a lot more interesting. Uh, I'll need to rethink defense. Uh, I'll do the I'll do the off stream. I think thinking is not very entertaining to watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's all the stuff that I have written down right now. Really, I kind of want to play matches, but I'll do. I'll look at. Uh, hey, does anyone know who my main character is? Any guesses? Without reading my Discord? I'm gonna pick random until I get it. Until I get the character. Is it Waldstein? Heck no. Is it Akatsuki? Boring. Uh, well, he wasn't in the last game, but I might try him out later. Is it Kaos? Yes. Yes, it is. I played a little bit of Yuzuri Ha, but I ended up settling on Kaos or Chaos. It's Kaos. Wrong button. Um, I did all his trials before the game came out in the in UniClear. It took me 40 minutes. Let's see if this takes me longer or shorter than 40 minutes.
This character's weird. He can chain his specials into his normals. That's very strange. That was jank. <laughs> I'll charge it. Why would you not cancel this? You can, you, you can do this. Make that a thousand times easier. Oh, I didn't. I need to, I need to lab that the new half circle. Um. Uh, new move. Whoa. I wonder how viable that is. That's super easy now. You can just buffer it. I suck at these. You, you never do this. It's like faster. There you go. What? Oh. Oh, his old... Ah, that, that's his old force function. Okay. They just made it only possible after this move now. Oops. Interesting. That's gonna take some getting used to. Why would I jump for this? Whoops. Ah. They're really hammering that combo home, huh? I see. This is not practical. It's so specific from the range. That's not practical. That's too early. Oh, I got it. Maybe they buffed it. <clears throat> Buff the upper hitbox. Too late. I don't think that was possible before. Getting the charge one in the middle of a combo. Maybe it's because the combo is so short. Yeah. This feels more consistent though. Let's see. Oh yeah. Too, too fast. Oops. 
Oh, this is the this is the classic. 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 <laughs> Let's see. This is different actually from what it used to be. Oops. Okay, it does work. You just do it fast. Oops. Fast. Too slow. It's hard. It's a lot closer to what his combo used to be. Oops. I think it's like the work. I just do it instantly. Ignore the freaking trial mode. No. How does he get that to hit? Oh. Charge it and then dash. Okay. Target. 
fast. Delayed charge DP. Not sure I believe that. <clears throat> I didn't charge it. Charge it again. Oh, backward jump as well. Backward jump. One hit. Is that why you had to delay? That's why you have to, yeah, that's why you have to delay the DP so that you get both hits.
Man. Thinking about hits. If you charge this, he has two hits, and the second hit slams him down to you. Let's, let's watch the demo. Yeah, see, it slams him back down. that those two parts it's always the delays I don't get this combo. interesting.
Nope. One hit. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Is there a way that I can lower his height somehow? I don't think so. Yeah, like the timing of the quarter back or the quarter forward B is tight. You have to do that as early as possible. The timing of the next move is also tight. And then the third move is the DP, so it's like Oh, that was faster, right? Like that? It's kind of annoying how good I am at the first 80% of this combo. <laughs> I'd be more worried about the claws than the kicks. Watch demo. Oh, the start's different. Look at this. He doesn't cancel 6C. He waits till 6C is over. Which, okay, I see. So that'll reduce his hit stun, but it'll also lower his height. That also makes this a little bit easier. Just, yeah, it's probably as soon as possible. Oh, that might have worked. 
just gonna make sure he's behind them. So he knocks him toward me. Uh, there's only two delays. There's only two delays, and then you just don't cancel 6C. It's still a weird input. Come on. I'm gonna super delay the first one and then not delay the second one. I could also delay that if I wanted to, but you don't need to. Close. really close. Oops. Ah. Close.
too high. You can't delay that. Well, that was tragic. So yeah, the second delay is a lot. If you delay that by even like one frame, it stops. It stops working. I was bamboozled. Don't do that delay. There's only, it, it delayed the wrong attacks. It says to delay the quarterback B and then the DP. You don't do that. You delay the quarter forward B, then the quarterback B, then you don't delay the DP. I mean, maybe the way they have it written is possible in some weird way, but... Oops. Oops. happening. Oops. There it is. Next trial. That one was too easy. Oh. Ariel B hold. Hold? Why am I holding? Oh, to make yeah, I forgot you could do that. If you hold a button, your dude tracks the opponent. So that's to position Ozzy where I want him. You can really do three? Ha. Huh. Huh. This is completely different from any combo I've done before. Oh, if I do it at... Okay. If I do it at where it places me, here, like at this distance, I can do a forward jump. Okay, that does work. Wow. There's no negative edge though. So at that point, I... Okay. That you can't cancel that, right? Too slow. Also, going from a jump to a down C is tough on Liverless. That's not too bad. Oh, I have to charge it. That's pretty bad, actually. <laughs> That's pretty freaking bad. <coughs> uh, the ending is the same as the previous combo, which is bad. Except I walk instead of jump at the end.
And then that's charged. They're both charged. Yeah, it's the same as the ending. Like that. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's already been more than 40 minutes. <laughs> Many more are left. It's been, it's been about 40 minutes. So if, if I ended right now, I would be about the same. Oh my god. I'm not even close to finished. If only Street Fighter 6's combos were this hard. Charge, charge it. Uh, that might have worked because I didn't have meter, actually. Oh, I, I didn't charge it though, but I could have held it and it would have worked. I think that's how that works. Oh no, you can't. Uh, oh no, you can. You, you, you can. Well, it's hard to tell actually. Oh, you can't. Okay, so he has a quarter forward B and a quarter forward B, but you hold the button. If you do quarter forward B, he lands in the front. If you do hold it, he goes through them and lands in the back. If I do quarter forward C without meter, it performs quarter forward B, but I can't hold the button down to get the charge. I could hold B first and then do quarter forward C, and now I'm guaranteed to get the charge version every time because I'm holding B when I do the move. That's kind of weird. This should probably change that. I gotta let him go through the opponent with that. Okay. Close. Thankfully, the ending is the same as the last combo, so. <laughs> they actually got the delays correct this time. You delay the quarter B and the quarter back B, and then you don't delay the DP. They got it right this time. Too high. 
He's too high because I didn't delay the first two attacks. Or the, I, I didn't delay the first one enough, I think. That's too much delay, though. He attacks out if you delay too much. Play that very much. I charged the wrong move. I let go. Too early. <clears throat> yeah, you can't delay that very much. You can't delay that like at all. This might be another fake delay in the trial menu. Or trial listing. If I can't delay that, then I don't know how I'm going to get the height. I might just be like a very tiny delay. Then the combo barely works. charge that one. Yeah. 
be a distance thing? Let me think. If I he's behind him, so if I take more distance, it hits sooner. That's fine. I don't think it matters. As long as it's not super far away. We can't charge this, right? There's no like charge version. Yeah, this is the same. I didn't walk. I did I did the combo. It did the same exact damage of what it wanted me to do, but I didn't walk backward for at least one frame, so it didn't count it. And now I'm gonna take another 30 minutes on this combo. Cause I didn't hold left for one frame. I didn't- I backdashed. I backdashed. I didn't walk. There you go. <sighs> same ending. Same ending. Okay. That's all I need to know is same ending. Huh? I might need... Okay. Yeah, but I can't... I have to let go quickly. That's rough. I, I can buffer it though. Not really. Yeah, so you can do that. That's the problem. Got it. CC. Definitely gonna wait for the launch though. Maybe it's... Maybe you cancel. Nope, you time it. Okay. That's not good. Wow, I didn't dash far enough? What? Oh no, it, the, the thing didn't connect. How do you get that to connect? I can't... Delay it? I, oh my god, this combo. But it, it doesn't say to delay it though. It does work that way though. Okay, so you can delay it. This time they have a delay that's not listed and it should be listed. <laughs> 
then you manually time the ender. It's the same ender as the two combos ago, which is basically the same as the ender as the one combo ago. The intro is a lot harder. It's actually pretty lenient on the timing of the dash, which is nice. It's still hard though. Facing the wrong direction. Is he supposed to face the wrong direction? <laughs> Is he supposed to face the wrong direction? No, he's not. Um, I need to dash further. No, that's not it. Because it, we're. Where a callus is standing doesn't matter. It's the relation between Ozzy and Gordo. How do I make him not do that? Hi, puppy. Careful, puppy. There we go. Man. Hi. How's everyone in chat doing? Puppy's be something fun. How do you not cross up? <laughs> How was Unity 2 so far? Only better than the previous. I have not found any aspect that is worse than the previous, or than the, yeah, than the previous game. 
Uniclear. And I haven't, I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing substantially better about it, except for the net code. Uh, I haven't looked at the, I haven't looked at lobbies yet. If they've made those better. Um, but aside from the netcode, the best thing I've noticed is they got rid of some option selects. <laughs> I mean, the game was already good before. It's just it didn't have a netcode. Um, but you can't do this anymore. Um, you can't... You can't throw tech and chain shift. At the same time. Um, you can delay the throw tech. Right, so I can do down back D for crouch shield. I, I didn't have Vorpal. I, you can do down back D, down back A plus D. And that gives you something similar to the godlike OS from the previous game, but it's not the same because the first input is not a throw tech. Um, so even if you do it frame perfectly, the throw break window is still reduced by two frames, so it's still good, but it's not. It's it's not this. Um, also, you can't do the off of normals anymore. You can't. You just straight up can't. If you whiff a normal, you can't do chain shift. Um, so I can't do those OS's, it has to be <coughs> with shield. It can't be a whiff throw, it can't be a whiff normal. You can still do it with specials. So that still works. But they've made throw out prioritize specials, which really nerf that because it, so if I do quarter circle forward plus throw oh what it's different for oh no it's forward dash forward forward dash out prioritizes specials okay so this this OS still works You can still do this, but that won't work with DPs because you can't chain shift during a DP. <laughs> uh, on block or with. Oh, never mind. Oh, it's not invincible. Never mind. There we go. Yeah, there. If you do in, in if you do a, a DP, it doesn't work. On hit, you can. And, you know, if, if your normal makes contact, you can. But you can't. Um, holding down back and pressing throw gives you a standing throw now. So all those option selects are gimped. Which is good. You gotta rethink your defense now. And actually take a risk once in a while. Um, in exchange, they made this easier. They made backdash, backdash throw easier. You, you, you used to have to plink backdash into throw like this. Or Kara cancel it. Uh, but now you can just press and, uh, do it at the same time. Same with forward throw. I can I can get a dashing throw 
by pressing forward plus the three buttons instead of having Takara from forward dash into throw. Um, which is nice. Because those aren't ex those aren't stupidly strong like this was. Um, but yeah. Other than that, they've, they've just added new mechanics like Celestial Vorpal and uh, this thing. Creeping Edge. Uh, and they got rid of high counters and they made light normals able to counter hit. In, in the previous game, if you counter hit with a light normal, it wouldn't do anything. There would be no extra hits done. Uh, but in this game, they do counter hit. Uh, what else did they change? Uh, s there's some balance stuff. Hide, hide super? What the frick? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he still has this super. Quarter forward C. But he no longer has half circle forward C. It is instead quarter circle forward force function. And... It doesn't consume grid like a force function would, but it's just a new input. Additionally, several characters have new force functions. So this is this is the old force function. But you can also press down plus force function, and it gets a two hit projectile. Um, yeah. The only other one I've seen is um, this guy. No, this guy. His force function is different. Uh, so this, that little roll, used to be his force function, but now it's a chain from forward C. It's it's six C six C, and so that force function is just gone. It's only a follow up from this move, which is all he ever used it for anyway. Uh, so now he has this and this. He has fire breath. And he has the flip. So two completely brand new moves. Um, they also, I think they buffed his combos. So there is also some balance changes. Uh, also, um, half circles. In the old game, you used to have to hit all five points on a half circle. So back, down, back, down, down, forward, forward. But apparently they changed that. Let's find out how it works now. Okay, I skipped one diagonal. You can't skip both. Okay. You're allowed to skip. You're allowed to skip down forward. Oh, but, uh, no, it's, you can't have a neutral. I want to get back down forward D. I skip down forward. really hard. Ah, that didn't work. Okay, I don't think you can skip down back. Yeah, 
right, you can have a neutral in between. Oh, I skipped down back. But that doesn't work. Okay. So half circles, the way I think it works, just based on my observations of the past five minutes, you can do the full motion and that works. You're also allowed to skip one of the diagonals like that, that works, or that works. Either of those two works, but you can't go neutral. So I can't do this. Um, that does not work. <clears throat> you can't put a neutral in between. So they made half circles easier, but not that much easier. Uh, let me tr let me turn off my SC and get this. Okay, that worked. Okay. You're allowed to skip any of those three directions. Yeah. You you can't skip the left or the right. But of but of the downward directions, these three directions you can skip one of them. Yeah. So you need you need back, then you need two of the three downward directions, and then you need forward. You're allowed to skip one of them. Like that. There I skip the two. There I skip the one. There, I skipped the three, and it still works. Uh, what else did they change? Well, there's three new characters, by the way. And one of them can fly. Um, what else changed? Like, this game's very similar to, like, KOF and Tekken, where the game is like, they update the game every few years, but it's not really a new game. The, the only reason they called this game Uni 2 is so that they could get rollback. <clears throat> like, the sprites are the same, almost. So, it's, it's, it's not like Street Fighter, where in Street Fighter 3 you have parries and a juggle system of six hits. And then in Street Fighter 4, you have focus cancels and focus armor and uh, Kara's and half screen throws and Omega mode. And then in Street Fighter 5, you have V trigger, V skill, uh, V reversal. And then in Street Fighter 6, you have drive reversal, drive rush, drive impact. That's not how this game works. You don't get like a brand new game with each game. Tekken 8's kind of doing that. I'm gonna be honest, they added a whole system, the heat system, and they removed the wall bounce system, and they changed a lot about the game. So Tekken 8 is kind of an exception. But everything from Tekken 1 to 6 and 7, even, uh, each update was a very small update. They didn't actually change anything. And even in Tekken 8, characters, like, if you just look at a move, most moves are the same. Like, they have the exact same frame data and everything. Uh, this game is like that. But I, I like this game because it's complex. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but it also meets a lot of the prerequisites that... Uh, most modern fighting games don't. This game has extended throw invincibility. Most modern games don't have that, which is random because all the old games have it. Um, this game has no autocorrection, which is amazing. Guess what? Most modern games have autocorrection. Uh, this game 
has difficult combos, guess what? Most modern fighting games don't have difficult combos. This game... What's autocorrection? Uh, it's, it's somewhere in this VOD, but the VOD's four and a half hours long at this point, so I'll go ahead and explain it again. Not a big deal. Um, let me record, or let me, let me just do this. Okay. Pretend I'm the Akatsuki, the one in the white shirt with the blue hair. And my, let's, let's get a better example. All right. Oh, that did, that, that did go over. Let's pretend I'm Akatsuki. First of all, this game has cross-up protection, so just because I'm right on top of him, it's it's ambiguous which side I'm, I'm gonna land on. If I wanted to block, it doesn't matter. I can block both ways and it works, uh, which is good. Uh, also, autocorrection does not exist. So in Street Fighter, uh, Hyde, is, Hyde is jumping over my head from left to right. Imagine I went to anti of this guy with a Shoryuken. What does that look like? Well, while he's on the left side, I have to input left, down, down, left, punch. Or it's, it's, it's Street Fighter, so I can do down, left, down, down, left, and then press punch. But this is not Street Fighter, so you can't do that. Uh, but but it, that, that's not what matters. What matters is that Hyde's jumping over my head. So I can start the input while he's on the left side, so I can do left for the forward, and then down, doesn't matter which side he's on, but by the time I press the button, he's probably behind me. Like, how do you anti-air cross-ups? Like, really tight cross-ups. Well, you press forward while they're in front of you, and then you press down, and then you press down back, because the, cause the, the new down forward is the old down back. So I press left, down, down right to get a short you can which is stupid and inconsistent and it's it's hard to do but not in a good way it's hard to do because it's inconsistent in this game that is not how it works in this game i'm allowed to press right before he gets past me so even if he's on my left right just counts as right and then I press down, and down counts as down, and then down right counts as down right. It doesn't count as back, down, down back. It, it, it counts as right, down, down right. For the purposes of the game's memory. So what does this mean? It means that I don't have to press left. Uh, I don't care when he crosses me up. I don't care. I can do the full motion to the right while he's on the left and then press the button once he switches sides to the right and I will get the move to the right. If I input any part of the shuriken to the left instead of the right, I will not get a shuriken to the right. It's not possible. So let me record him jumping over my head. That's not a knockdown. Uh, how do I knock down with this character? Oh, there we go. How do I cross up with this character? That's an even better question. B? B. Oh, too close. They're not close enough, rather. Hmm. I'm gonna pick a different character. <laughs> Here, I'll I'll pick a. Uh... Stop it. This button. I'll pick. Um... You have a DP, don't you? Yeah. 
There you go. Yeah. And the B version is okay, cool. Perfect. Perfect. I put it on the wrong one. You're hide. You're not a say. Alright. There we go. Really nice, juicy cross-up. This would be pretty hard to anti-air in Street Fighter. Whoops. Oh, I didn't quick rise. It's insanely easy to anti-air in this game. I just do the input to the right or to the direction he's going early and then time the button press to where he's already crossed me up. That's all it is. Which is again, easier technically, but by having autocorrection, it's not a good type of difficulty. It's an inconsistent type of difficulty. So yeah, um, how'd I get there? Uh, I was talking about the things I like, I, I like about the game, and then I said it's like KOF in very subtle ways. Um, all games made by this company are like KOF in subtle ways that are good, such as not having autocorrection. Um, there are, I have a couple of very small problems with the game. I just, 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 just a couple. Um, I don't like how they handle specials. Oh, did they change it? Wait, hold on. I gotta lab that. No, they didn't. Wait, that was an 8. They made it even more lenient. That was... okay. 8, 8. That was... Uh, 8, 9. Still worked. 11, 3 does not work. 10. Okay, so 9 is the latest. Okay, so they they increased that. That's fine, but it's the problem with special inputs is that it 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 so you're on a timer, obviously. Cause you, I, I I can't do this and get a special move. That's not how it works. I'm on a timer, uh, but what I want is for the timer to be total. I want a total amount of time that says you have to do the motion within this time. That's not how this game works. This game works by counting each individual step. Each individual step has a limit, in this case, of 8. Or is it 9? I forget. It's 9. If I spend more than 9 frames between parts of the motion, it fails. That's not how it should be. It shouldn't be 9 at each step. It should be like 25 total. Uh, and I, I don't know why it should be, but that's what I feel in my gut. Because I've been playing KOF for 10 years and that's how KOF does it and KOF is always right. <laughs> now, I, I do know why. It's because it rewards you for doing the motion quickly. If you if you can do the motion quickly, you're allowed to wait longer. Like say say I want to do say I want to do a Hadoken. Like that. But I want to walk forward before doing the Hadoken. It's, it's just it's just it's a small thing. 
But in this game, you can't walk forward as much. I, there's a maximum of nine frames, and it doesn't like it doesn't matter. Like I can do the motion very slow. I still have a maximum of a, a maximum of nine frames where I can walk. Um, but if it's if it, if it's KOF, the faster I do that. Wow, that was frame perfect. Wow, that was not. That was frame perfect. The faster I do the first part of the motion, the more time I have to walk. That's not the case in this game. Now, this doesn't really matter. Yeah, there's, there, oh God, there's a lot of that too. I don't like that. So, this move. Is down down punch or, or there's no punches? But it's down down and a button. I cannot hold down and then release it and then hold it and then press the button. See, watch what watch my inputs. I'm holding down. I can't go neutral or down again. This is because the game is programmed, uh, which it doesn't tell you this. But it's actually not 252A. It's it's 5252A. You need both neutrals. Which means that I can't, you know, walk backward, for, like, or walk forward, for example, and do it. It doesn't work. See? Like, I'm clearly hitting down, neutral, down A in the span of, like, five frames. But it doesn't count because you need the neutral first. The same is true of dashes. If you do it fast enough, you can do it. But it, but it, like, say I'm going from here, that's not a dash. I hold down, I double tap forward. It doesn't work. I need a neutral. I need neutral forward, neutral forward to get a forward dash. Uh, which it doesn't matter for dashes because you can just do the macro. But it matters for this move because you, there's no macro, there, 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 there's no one direction macro. You, have to, you still have to double tap every time. So I, I don't like that. That should be changed. But then again, in in KOF 13, I was complaining because I kept getting teleports with a psychic and I didn't want them. So I don't know what the best solution is. If I'm being honest. Maybe just get rid of that input. It's stupid. Um. And also, just the co like combo systems and anime fighting games in general, I don't like. And this game has your generic anime fighter combo system, where what combos are possible depends on the amount of time the combo has been happening, which is stupid. <laughs> if I press A, B, C, and the opponent's on the ground, it should combo. Or it should not combo. Not sometimes it combos and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it's much more intuitive. The game's easier to learn. The game is less annoying to play. Because you're like, oh, I waited an extra five frames at the beginning of my combo and now my combo doesn't work anymore. Um, one way to resolve that would be to not start the, that timer until you launch them. So, so combos from ABC launch would be the same as combos from AAAABC launch. Um, that's one way to solve that, but it's still not foolproof. It's still stupid. <laughs> I much prefer KOF 13's method of well, let's just not give the player insanely high juggles. Let's actually put in the effort to make sure there are no infinites. <laughs> Instead of putting in a stupid timer system. It's not as bad as Skullgirls' combo system, but it's still not as good as KOF 13's combo system. Which KOF 13 did have infinites. It had like two or three different infinites. Um, and one of them dominated tournaments. 
And that's a problem. You should get rid of the infinites. But that infinite she's but that but that infinite that dominated tournaments is because of a glitch. <laughs> it's not because of an oversight, it's because of a glitch. Like if you input a super when you don't have a super, he cancels his move early. Which lets you do <laughs> Which destroys your hand at the cost of Or it which wins you tournaments at the cost of a lot of practice and your tendons in your hand. So they should probably remove that for multiple reasons. One, because it's a glitch and it's an infinite. And two, because it ruins people's hands. <laughs> um, but I still prefer that comp the, that system. Also, just in general, I prefer KOF13's like, drive cancel system, where you do special, 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 special. You know, like quarter circle, quarter circle, quarter circle. Uh, I prefer that to this game's Normal, 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 special, special, normal, 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 jump cancel, normal, normal, normal. Charge normal, special, super. Veil off, super, super, super. Um. I also, I'm uncertain. I'm uncertain how I feel about this. So this game has extended throw invincibility on knockdown. I can't throw you. I believe it's 8 frames. I have to wait 8 frames before throwing you after you're knocked down. So if you do any move that's 8 frames or faster, then I can't throw you. In KOF, it's like 10 frames, but that's a small difference. What's different is that it only applies on a knockdown. Um, if I hit you, for example, that window is still there, but instead of it whiffing like you're invincible to throws, I can just combo into throws. Right? But every time you combo into a throw, or block string into a throw, um... Or block string into a throw. It's a it's a yellow throw, and they can like react to that and break it on a reaction. It's a, it's a twenty eight frame reaction. It's pretty easy. Um, but so okay, how is that different from being invincible to throws? Well, one, I don't punish your throw. I just escape the throw, and I'm plus eight, which is cool. It, if you take a throw, you're plus eight. If your throw is text, you're minus eight, uh, which is fine in this game because you're usually teching throws with a crouch tech. So there's no chance of you attempting to defensively tech a throw, but then they end up teching your throw, so you're at minus frames. So that, that's that's okay. The problem is, how do you beat throws? Well, in KOF, you can just mash any button. That's 10 frames or faster, and you can't get thrown anymore. In this game, that's true if my opponent wants to get a non-yellow grab. If I get a yellow grab, it's different. But if I wait for the non-yellow grab, now they can't break my throw, but I'm at risk of getting hit by their 8 frame or faster attack, not 10 frames. Uh, the problem with that is yellow grabs beat it. Because if I mash my eight frame or faster move, but you yellow grab me out of it, I can't tech it anymore because I can't tech throws during attacks. So what this game needs is, this game needs the ability to tech throws during stuff. Because right now, if you, okay, so in KOF 13, you, you can block a DP, for example, but you still can't punish with a throw. Even if you block a DP and punish it with a throw, they can tech the throw. That's what they need in this game. But you gotta make sure to not let people throw tech during things that are specifically supposed to lose to throws. For example, rolls. Uh, rolls. Rolls in KOF 13 
are invincible to strikes, but not throws. And they made it so that you can't tech throws if you are thrown out of a roll. Same with Tekken. If you are thrown out of a power crush in Tekken, you cannot tech the throw. Which is good. That's what they should do. So that's what this game needs, is it needs... You can tech throws during most stuff. Even if it's on startup, if it's on recovery, it doesn't matter. But things that are supposed to lose to throws, like this, um, I think, I'm actually not sure, um, should not let you take a throw during it. That's what they need to do. Uh, what else do they need? Uh, they need to change chain shifts. Chain shift input is DD. Which is stupid. <laughs> it should be like, I don't know, DB or something. That's not used for anything. B and D at the same time. Um, and these are all incredibly small things that I would change if I got my hands on this game. If French Bread hired me, those, are what, th those would be the things I would change. They're all ex incredibly small. I guess I would change the art style. <laughs> but that's, that's why I don't get hired, because that would take a lot of money. <laughs> um, I guess the UI is too simple. I'm not a fan of modern UI. Where the bars is just like one color with a thin outline. And it's all like geometric shapes. I don't like that. Oh, the tutorial mode needs... I would completely write a brand new tutorial mode from scratch, because this tutorial is really bad. Um, yeah. This game's good. I'm probably going to play it for a long time. Uh, the, on the only reason I stopped playing the old game is because it didn't have rollback. But this game has rollback, so... This is... Sort of KOF on light. On, on, on like... This is like vegan KOF for me. Because KOF 13, I like drive cancels. I, li I like the drive cancel combos, and this game doesn't have that. Uh, so just, it's... Well then again, I'm on leverless, so maybe this game is better for leverless. <laughs> I think KOF 13 is. Um... Oh, also, input buffer is too long. <laughs> I like my one-frame links and my- well, I don't like one-frame links. I like my two-frame links. Give me back my two-frame links. But, the, I'm, I mean, this game is not easy by any means. You have to delay a lot of stuff in your combos. So... Um... Yeah. I mean, if KOF 13 had players and rollback, on PC, then I would probably just play that. But KOF does not have rollback on PC, and it definitely does not have players playing it. So I have this game. Tekken 8 is just a it's it's a different game. You can't really compare them. A 3D game compared to a 2D game is just so different. Um, Tekken definitely does not fit my personal preferences. It's too... It's too defensive. And they made Tekken 8 more aggressive. Um, but... Not in the... That's not really what they did. What they did was they made it... Was they made blocking worse. That's what they did. Is, is they made blocking worse. Which is a very specific type of defense nerf. But then they buffed sidesteps. <laughs> and they buffed damage. And they buffed corner or wall carry. <laughs> and they added chip damage. <laughs> Which I guess is a nerf to blocking, but it's like. Really? Uh, I would have done. I, I would not have done. Have gone down that route. I would have done something else. Uh, 
Um, but it's still a good game. Tekken 8's still a good game. It's still very balanced, surprisingly. Um, it has a lot of characters, and it's not dumb. It's not dumb to play Tekken 8. Like it is to play Street Fighter 5. Or Street Fighter 4. Or, yeah. Any game that's stupid. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that. Um, I'm going to end the stream. It's been five hours. Thanks for watching. Um, but yeah, join on YouTube, subscribe on Twitch, become a Patreon on Patreon, join the Discord, all that stuff. Uh, see you guys later. I'm going to play, play, play this game more tomorrow, so get ready for it. Bye-bye.